Hello, and welcome to another meeting of the Geek Cabal, Cabal Whisperings. Uh, this is episode 15, and today's date is November 17th, 2023. So, well, I say I would like to say that we've got a uh, jam-packed episode. What? I was going to get to the name, you know. I was going to get there. I know what I'm doing. It's been a long week, so. Anyways, I'm Jim. I'm Bob. And yes, that's my name, if you didn't know. I'm sure you out there. So, as I was saying before, I was told that I need to tell myself who I am first. Um, I don't know if we got a whole lot on the uh, the agenda for today, so that doesn't ever mean that's going to be a short episode, because we found that sure out. Sure didn't that, last time. No, we're like, oh, we only have like three topics. Three hours later. No. But, anyways, as far as channel news, um, we did finally hit that uh, 300 mark, and we are doing some videos to commemorate that. We did our 10th unboxing, uh, which, depending on how timing goes, you'll have to you know, either go find that, or it'll come out sometime after this one, so who knows? Probably after this one, but we'll see. That's why I'm not going to mention what it is, because, again... Yeah, no, don't spoil it. Gotta go see it. Yeah, and uh, as far as the getting together, as far as the commemorating the, the landmark, uh, it is going to be a little while before we get the whole gang together uh, because of various scheduling issues. Uh, but to reiterate what we've said a couple times, and we definitely mean, and we want to say it again, thank you to all the folks who made this possible. And uh, hopefully you'll stick with us for a while longer yet. Yeah. Definitely, uh, I'm not, not, not going to ask you to be right or die here, but, you know. I will. <laughs> That's the only kind of people we want here. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> to the end of the line. No, I mean, it's been, it's definitely been a experience. Uh, definitely been something that I've enjoyed doing, being able to talk. It's not always about the people. It's not always about, you know, like how many people we get, how many of that. It's about us being able to express and talk about the stuff. We realize that, you know, we spend days and you know, hours or you know, hours of, you know, days just talking about this stuff. And it's like, why not get that word out to people? Why not just see what other people think about our random conversations and stuff like that? And like I said, it's been a ride. It's been nice to get that out, hear people, you know, respond back and, um, you know, just get their general opinions and stuff. Seeing people get excited about the same stuff that I get excited about. Yeah. Like I was uh, talking to Brad uh, on the phone excuse me, a couple days ago and, uh, you know, about that and a few other things and trying to hammer out when we're actually able to get together. Um, and like he said, even if no one else subscribes, like that's three, that's, that's 300 more than I thought was going to happen at this point. You know, I thought it was going to be a very slow burn if we went anywhere at all, you know? So that's, I, I think, I think 300 simply amazing. I mean, obviously we'd like a lot more. That's, that's the nature of the beast, but, just, just what, just what you know, we've accomplished together collectively, all of us here. You know, that's that's something. It's it's not nothing. It's definitely noteworthy. And it's definitely been nice to you know since I've come on because I've kind of you know each one of us add a unique flair to the, uh, the to the experience. And then when we come together on like the podcast here, then we can have this that melting pot of of ideas and information and you know different things like that. So. Yeah, and uh, on the note on the podcast, um, I am trying to sort out exactly what we're going to have to do to put this on other podcasting things. Um, so I, I'm, I'm looking into that. Uh, I doubt if, if you happen to be hearing this on someplace other than YouTube, and you're like, episode 15, where's episodes 1 through 14? Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen this quickly. It's probably going to be you know, a week or two down the road here because I've just got to figure out all the ins and outs. Uh, but uh, if you happen to be hearing this elsewhere, I'm probably not going to put the past episodes up. I, I don't think. Jim, what do you think? Um, I don't know. That's, I mean, that's really up to... Uh, the yeah, I, I just... Uh, the only reason I'm reluctant to is because they're fairly topical to the moment they we produce them because we tend to just kind of talk about current events and a lot of, for like probably 60, 70% of each podcast. But I, I don't know. I might put them up there. 
Uh, I might put them in like a separate collection, like just in case someone wants to go back and listen to them and they don't want to come over to YouTube. Uh, we'll just ha I'll just have to feel that one out. But whenever we finally do make that shift to putting these elsewhere, that's going to be like the first announcement in whatever episode that happens in. So, because I want to have it ready before we record an episode and then go from there. And barring a technical problem, that's when it'll happen. Now, I've looked into it a little bit, and it would appear that the main thing I just need to do is get onto the the Apple whatever, uh, because several other programs just use Apple's list. So I just have to do that. Uh, but it's going to come down to, like, where to store the files or, or something like that. And the videos I've seen thus far on how to do all this kind of skip that step. So... I've got to look a little more into it. Uh, also, Brad and I have been discussing trying to do a newsletter or something like a newsletter. And once we kind of nail down what shape that's going to take, we'll figure out how to best go about distributing it, leaning towards something like Patreon. And it's either going to be like a free tier or like a dollar or something. It's not going to be a lot. Uh, because the goal is more spreading it than, you know, striking it rich that way. Uh, at least that's the plan at the moment. We'll see how that pans out. I have to look into the Patreon system and all the ins and outs of that and see if I can find somebody who can uh, point me in the right direction as far as how to make it look like more than just a, a Word document. Uh, or we might just stick with a Word document. I mean, you know, it's free, like... Hopefully no one has any expectations of, like, massive upgrades to appearance and more concerned with the content. Uh, but we'll see. And I'm not sure if it'll be monthly or bi-monthly or weekly. You know, it's all things we've got to sort out. Uh, we did decide that once we're for sure on the technical side, how we're going to distribute it and everything and how to get it to people, that we want to try to set up, like, say it'll be monthly, we want to try to get the majority of the content for two or three issues just to see what it takes to do that so that we don't like get rolling and then, oh man, you know, nothing. So, because we want to, once we start, we want it to be consistent. That's the plan anyway. We'll see where it goes. Um, then beyond that, uh, you're going to be listening to this the Monday of the week of Thanksgiving, given that it's a holiday week. I don't know for sure that we're going to get together to record or when we're going to get together to record episode 16. So we might have a down week, um, which will be the week after Thanksgiving because we're recording this before and then it'll go up the week of and, you know, just because of timing. Now that might not happen. You know, we might actually be able to get together and record another episode, but I'm just forewarning just in case it doesn't happen happen because it's a holiday week and you know everyone's got family obligations and work and everything else and it's just hectic so who has family well, i mean whatever it's worth jim like I, I got the feeling that's what i'm going to be hearing from you when i ask you when we when we're going to be getting together yeah no 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 i'm just uh just kidding sorry i stepped away for just a moment to try to this is just how much of a crunch we're in that we recorded a ton of videos for the main channel, I mean, quite a few. Three. Yeah, but, and they were, you know, like I said, the the tenth unboxing, that was a, a big part. That took a, quite a bit of time to do. Uh, the the Lego one had me had me worried that I was, my phone was going to run out of <laughs> run out of uh, space, and it was close. It was like 10 gig left. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, a 10, 15 minute video can be 10 gig, so. Yeah. Um, so right now, I'm trying to get all that uploaded and so I stepped away for a moment to finish that up and move on to uh, get that moving on. So, yeah. So that's, uh, that's future plans for the show. Uh, what we've done, what's popped up this last week, we did the uh, Halloween wrap up or just kind of some final thoughts, a few things I forgot to mention throughout the various videos. Finally actually said which ones I actually like and dislike because I realized I didn't say that at all anywhere in there. Um, the, uh, second part to the Romero zombie movies, which is probably two of two. Uh, and again, that was just more a matter of 
as I was editing them, I was like, you know, we never actually talked about the plots to these six movies. I just assume people know what they are, which is a mistake, you know, because I'm sure people, there's people out there that don't know what they're like. Oh, Romero's Army, what the hell's this? You know, and well, they'll get into it and be like, what in the holy hell is this guy talking about? Who are these people? What farmhouse? You know, so it helps to explain it. So it's that plus a more cohesive final thoughts as far as how to weave the tales together. Uh, then we also had the unboxing with the uh, uh, assorted video games and uh, the Orcus figure. Yeah, so that one right now so far hasn't got a whole lot of traction. So if you are listening to this and you are on our YouTube channel, go take a look at it. It's kind of, and, not, and that's not me begging for anything. It's besides the uh, the weird video thing that happened with. Uh, the- yeah, I, I didn't like. I didn't see until I was editing. That uh, the the I, it's I say it's a miniature, but the things like it's it goes on a four inch base, a four inch by four inch base. It hangs over in every single direction from that by a good two or three inches, and is at least six inches tall. So miniature is kind of a not exactly the accurate term there, but I mean it is a miniature version of something. So I guess it is. Uh, but like as I was unboxing the thing, it's just like a black hole on the film. So it, is, it doesn't look good at all. I thought about just fast-forwarding through that, but then I actually talked about it quite a bit in there and can't really unbox it twice because that was legitimately the first time I'd ever opened the box. Uh, now, on the close-ups, it looks just fine. So if you start to watch it, you're like, oh, God, this is awful. If you just want to see that figure, fast-forward to where Jim starts talking about the video games because all that's crystal clear. His is, is a lighting issue or something. Or my figure of the Demon Lord is actually possessed and is just a black hole that sucks in all light and hope around it. One of the two, you know, could go either way. But uh, the close-up worked just fine. So if you want to actually just see the figure, you know, go to Jim's part, let him talk about the video games, and then it comes to the close-ups, starts with the figure, then goes to the video games. So just if you hit that and you're like, oh, God, this sucks, what they do? Like, we don't know what happened because there's a light pointed right at it. And yeah, so... so you know, we, we, every single video we try to experiment with, like, moving the lighting around or, um, like, the latest video, we made sure we kind of brought one down a little bit closer so you can see a little bit more detail, uh, trying different, ca- you know, trying to, like, use the cell phone versus the, the camera we use for the podcast because the one for the podcast is good for, you know, far away and uh, a static shot. If you're doing any movement or you've got stuff coming close at it likes to freak out a little bit on that. Um, so, but anyways, what I'm saying is, is that I unbox a bunch of NES games. You unbox the, uh, the, uh, Orcus, the, the Prince of Undeath. So Undeath? Undeath. So, so. Alive. Yeah, there, there's, there's a, no, <laughs> no. Uh, there, there's a whole, Orcus has like a whole big background where at some point he was killed and turned into an undead creature and then back into a demon lord and, I think part of him is presently residing in one of the, I think in Primus, in the plane of Mechanus, and it's complicated, is my point. So, one of the things, um, and I just kind of want to get a little bit of, so we're going to go through kind of some of the normal stuff that we normally go through today, um, but uh, one thing I want to, you know, I'm going to talk about is I went, uh, to, went did some uh, thrifting, and actually kind of the state of what flea markets have become has kind of disappointed me as of late so all right so that'll probably be in our miscellaneous section at the end so stick around for that or fast forward to that if you prefer you know, yeah. it's up to you we're not gonna put any time stamps so you just have to guess <laughs> when, when, <laughs> i don't put time stamps on these well when there was when probably like, should but... when it's like an hour long though it's kind of hard to do that so anyways um and i don't know if with movies i don't know if it's because of the end of, end of the writer's strike a lot of times they can't talk about their movies until that kind of stuff is over. But it just seems about right when the strike ended, we got flooded with movie trailers and show trailers and different things like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't even consider that until Jim said something just before we started filming. I I never heard anything that said that that would stop them. But on the other hand, I mean, there are a bunch of them all at once. So maybe. So, uh, yeah. So, want to talk about the trailers first, then? Yep. Um, yeah. I was going to say, where do you want to start? Because there do were, you the, want to start with the good or the bad? Well, the one that 
that kind of got me that I, I was just really surprised how many people would just immediately complain about was the Madam Web. Let's start with the bad. Um, cause the one is like, man, they did my boy Ezekiel wrong. And I'm like, I kind of get why they just didn't have like an old man just jumping on the walls like Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, because I don't think anybody would have, I don't think people that didn't know, like even me, I, like, I didn't even realize it was Ezekiel at first. I wouldn't have even realized if even it was an old man. I've been like, why is this guy like jumping on the ceiling like Spider-Man? Cause even though I had him as a hero clicks figure, I would have never put two and two together on that. Like, yeah. I- so, do I blame them for putting him into a Spider-Man-like suit? No, not really, because it, it gives you a little bit of, what the hell is this? Um, though, I'm pretty sure if I had just gotten stabbed and immediately came back and said, let's try this again, I don't think that'd be my first comment. I'd like to believe that's after she's had the powers for a while. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll have to see, maybe. Uh, so and this is going to be a movie, right? Yeah, this this is because it well it has to be. It's not a Disney Plus thing. It's is uh, Sony is releasing this. Well, maybe Sony will start a streaming service on the PS Five. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, we've got Madam Web, who traditionally is an old woman and is now played by Dakota Johnson, right? Uh, yeah, fairly young person. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's Don Johnson's daughter. Yeah. Uh, she's in 50 shades of gray. That's yes. who it is. Um, uh, presumably none of that's carrying over. Although maybe if, well, it's R, if it's an R rating, it might make it a better movie. Well, I mean, some what they did with Aunt May. I mean, Aunt May's just good. That did nothing but getting younger. Every, yeah. every outing. Yes. She's, yes. She's, there were, there were some pretty excellent memes. Thanks to Marissa Tomei's Aunt May. But anyway, uh, we also seem to have. Like like the other characters, as the trailer progresses, you realize they are the other characters who are, who are assortedly known as Spider Woman and something else. Spider Girl and yeah, because there's like Jessica Drew, Spider Woman, I think. Uh, well, I don't I don't know enough about the rest of them to know who's who in there. Well, but, so, but I did recognize most of them in their comic personas. I, so I, so it's going to have something to do with that. So I sent you this. Okay, so they have Cassandra Webb as Madam Webb. Ezekiel Sims. It says Julia Carpenter, Spider Woman. Okay. Uh, Maddie Franklin, Spider Woman. Sure. Anya Corzon, Spider Girl, and Ben Parker. Yeah. You know, Uncle Ben. Isn't he dead? This movie takes place in the 2000s. Oh, yes, because I remember Uncle Ben from the 2000s. <laughs> Well, look at Aunt May in the Spider-Man movies, you know. But um, I don't know. So, yes, I mean, the, I get I get that they have to make them newer for, uh, the, you know, they they have to bring people forward. I mean, you're, they, they can't all be Captain America being frozen as a pops, you know, capsicle. Um, you know, and I mean, they did it right with Iron Man when they brought him up. I mean, they they set him in a different war, which I think. Well. You know, Iron Man, he kind of had to like. It's like like whenever they made the Thomas Jane Punisher movie, like he was in Iraq, not Vietnam. Like you, for the movies, I get it, you have to, and even the comics have kind of gone that route. Like, excuse me, I believe Iron Man officially was in a Southeast Asian conflict. <laughs> it's not specifically Vietnam anymore. And I think the Punisher is the same way. Even though there's a Punisher comic called The Nom. So, yeah, you, you know, with the comics, you've got to get a little more fluid. And it gets really screwy with Captain America because there's, like, an issue where he's talking to this guy, uh, uh, you know, a soldier, and he's like, oh, son, I just think of all the things you saw while I was frozen. And he talks about, like, man going to the moon and things like that. And I'm like, no, Cap, your comics have been running since the 60s. You saw that, too. It's just that Marvel has to compress the timeline. Yeah. So now he officially didn't, even though there's comics contemporary with that event with Captain America in them, unfrozen. So that's just, that's the screw things you get with comics. So what 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 do you what do you think is bad about us? I mean, so far, well, I, I mean, okay, okay, like okay. It's it's just a trailer. You know, hard to say, but let's say you're sitting there, you're Sony. Marvel just released the Marvels. An all-female-led team, 
You know, they're all sassy girl boss types. And it is obviously going to be bombing at the box office because it did not do well weekend one. Unless it has one hell of a turnaround for weekend two, which it probably won't. Then you're sitting there and you're like, now's the perfect time to basically release kind of the same movie, but just with spider people. Like, I'd be like, well, maybe not. Well, and and again, this is just to, to let everyone know, it, there's nothing wrong with an all-female-led cast. Of no, anything. no, no, it's it's not, that's not the problem. I'm you saying... Have, the thing is that you have to have actual, you have to have people that are, and again, I don't know anything about the movie, so I, I, the, the movie may be fantastic, who knows. But the thing is, is that like when they try to impose traits onto... On that note, we're hoping to find out tomorrow. Yes. Um, when you're trying to put traits onto people that don't fit, you know, generally fit, because, you know, when you have very masculine traits and you're putting them on... The thing is, is that you, you always go back to Alien. She was not... I mean, don't get me wrong... Uh, uh, Ripley had her moments of, you know, where she was kind of a tomboyish, but she was never a man. She was never, she had the feminine trait. She, you know, especially showed in Aliens when she was. Yeah. Yeah, it's, with, it's played like, a lot more in Aliens. Taking yeah. care of Newt and, you know, the fact that she met, made her a, such a better character because it's a person you could put your, even if you're not a woman, you could say, I could see that. I can feel that I could be, I could relate to this character in some sort right. of fashion. Right, she, she was... She was set up to be a believable action hero, not in such a way that we're like, oh, she's going to arm wrestle the alien queen. It's like, no, that's preposterous. That's clearly not going to happen. You know, but it's like a woman can operate again. You know? And in, in her case, she could operate a... And, and the power lifter, like, like that was set up throughout the movie. Now, for all I know, this Madam Web movie is going to be fantastic. Like, obviously, I've got to see another trailer before I can even really begin to judge. I'm just saying that's the criticism I'm seeing at the moment. And, uh, Spelled out by the drinker, by the way. And, uh, yeah, so that's that is me. And, uh, so yeah, that, like I said, that's just what I've seen so far. And it's also still that whole weird business of Sony, like trying to build up a Spider Man universe, but without Spider Man. Because they've got like the Morbius movie, which I still haven't watched, they've got the Craven movie coming out, which. I don't know what the hell's going on there. And then you have this one and it's like, you know, guys, Tom Holland sitting like right over there. You could like throw some villains at him. Just saying. Well, and okay. So just as a comparison here, um, I, you know, I'm looking at the, um, the Godzilla minus uh, minus one trailer. There is nothing about some sort of like the only message is being said is, you know, pretty much, uh, the evils of war and nuclear, you know, bombs and stuff like that. And I think it's told more of a story and had me more hooked than pretty much, you know, most of the trailers that we're probably going to talk about. Not saying that all the trailers we had were bad, but just the amount of storytelling, the way that they do almost like a traditional trailer where it's, it's my, my fear with like Madam Web and a lot of the others is that everything that's good is in the trailer. Ah, uh. You mean like whenever a movie purports to be a comedy and all the even remotely funny parts are in the trailer? Yep. And you get to the movie and you're like, what am I watching? Why am, why am I doing this to myself? But no, and and again, it's very early on the trailer to understand um, exactly these characters and their motivations and everything else, but I'm hoping, hoping that they do take a key and say, let's put some believability into these people and, you know, not just make them men, you know, they, they can be vulnerable. They can be different things. And then seeing them overcome that. Um, and again, I don't want to make it sound like there's like some disadvantage. There's not women have their, you know, women have things that they can do better than men when it comes to certain situations, but there's other. Well, that, right. And, and once you start factoring potential superpowers into the mix, like, as long as it's explained properly, you know, it's not a problem. You know, like if you tell me like she Hulk, for instance, is obviously going to be at least close to the Hulk's level of strength, if not equal. So against most other opponents, sure. She's going to be physically stronger. You know, she's a version of the Hulk. Of course she is. Well, 
there was there's a, a scene that I've seen recently that it, it was just like plain and short. This one where they're like, you know, he's trying to teach her like how to like just you know use her strength, and they're like show, throwing a rock, and he throws a rock a little ways, and then she throws it a little farther than he does, and she's like, yeah, whatever, and then he just launches one into space. Yeah, you know, I mean. To me, that's at least a little bit believable. Like, they, like there, there's nothing about that sequence that makes me think, oh, you know, she thinks she knows what she's got, you know, that she's, yeah, I can outdo you. And then he's just like, uh, no, that was. Well, right, because Hulk is notably stronger than She Hulk. But that's because that's the Hulk is like ludicrous level strength. So, yes. So, and again, I'm, I'm going to wait for some people in the comments. We're going to lose a subscriber too. That's going to be like, you're, I'm like, it's nothing about that. It's like, well-written characters that you can put yourself into that role is what we're talking about. And this can be for men too, because if men are written in a way that's just not a believable in any sense, unless the thing that they're going for is a totally unbelievable person. Yeah. You know, again, if you do make a live action one punch man, I mean, I expect it to be ludicrous and ridiculous and over the top, but more than likely it would not be a very good story because. Well, this kind of reminds me of something I read just the other day. This was about Hicks from yeah. Aliens. Not Hicks, Hudson. Yes. And uh, it's basically like, you know, it was, it was like just like a commentary on Facebook. Like, you know, everyone says Hudson was just a blowhard. But like, first of all, Hudson was the tech guy. Hudson was not the point of the spear. And even after losing his shit, which he obviously does, like, once Ripley, like, kind of slaps him in line, like, he gets in line and... He doesn't go down like a bitch. He goes down swinging. And if you, if you actually look how he goes down, he's firing up into the ventilation thing. He knows the aliens have acid for blood. He knows this is going to, like, it's going to kill him, too. But, you know, he's not going down without a fight. Yeah. Like, Hudson was in no way, shape, or form a coward. You know, it's just that Hudson wasn't used to that level of conflict. And, like, once he saw what was going down, like, he pulled himself together and did his damn job, you know? So he initially comes across as that like, oh man, this, this is a Marine. This guy's not falling apart like this. You know, meanwhile, Hicks is over there, like pull it together. Yes. You know, you know, Hicks is what you expect. Yeah. You know, but it's just one of those things, like you're saying, you know, that's Hudson was somewhat unbelievable up to that point. Because you're like, this guy's a Marine. Like, what the fuck is going on here, you know? Everyone else is basically keeping their shit together. And Hudson's, like, falling apart until you realize, well, Hudson is the tech guy. Like, he's not actually the front line. That's actually Vasquez. Well, and Vasquez... Which which is why he was, you know, trading the verbal barbs with Vasquez, you know, because she was a badass. And, and Vasquez still was a believable character because she showed, you know, she showed moments of, you know, because at the end, didn't she kind of, like... Well, it's her and Gorman at the end, and, you know, it's like, on the one hand, you know, she's like, you were always an asshole, but on the other hand, like, you know, all right, well, fuck it, we're not getting taken by these things, you know, see you in hell. Yeah, and it was a, a, there was nothing unbelievable about her character. I mean, she wanted to prove herself in a, in a world full of men, Yeah, and, you know, did what she did very, very well, but not in a way that was like, I'm better than these people. It was more of like, I am on par with my teammates. I'm right. Just- she she very clearly considered Drake her equal. You know, it was clear that they were really comrades because like the moment, the moment they even suggested leaving Drake behind, she's like, no, we got to go get him. They're like, no, he's dead. We got to go. You know, and that's, that's Hicks being, you know, keeping yeah. a level head of like the real, the realism of the situation. Like if they ain't in this truck, they're dead, you know, armored car or whatever, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, oddly enough, on to another Sony trailer. So they released Madam Web, but they also released Ghostbusters, the Frozen Empire trailer. So, the very first thing I saw thought about this is, they just killed a bunch of people just randomly with ice spears. Yes, and this is in fact not a sequel to The Day After Tomorrow. Yeah, it was, uh... Because that was my first thing. Is I was like, man, they are not pulling anything back. Because, I mean, those people on the beach either got stabbed through the foot or... Yeah, I'm I'm assuming in the movie itself, we're going to hear either very minor casualties or miraculously everyone somehow survived or something. Because up to this point, the Ghostbuster franchise hasn't just gone around murdering a bunch of people. You know, 
up to this point. Well, I mean, you have like in the very first one, I think, it was what the taxi driver? Doesn't he get like possessed and turned into a ghoul? At some well, point? I assume there was no taxi driver in the car, uh, and that was a manifestation. You know? uh, that's my that's my assumption. I never knew. I, I, I... But to your point, though, at the end of the movie, surely to God, someone had to have gotten hit with falling debris or fell into that hole in the middle of the street or mol- molten marshmallow goo. Exactly. <laughs> Drown in that, yeah, or like in the church whenever whenever the Stay Puft Marshmallow steps on it, like I'm sure some people had to. It's this is like in Marvel Comics where for a long time they're trying to man, it's a real, it's really lucky the Hulk hasn't managed to kill anybody with his rampages. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like he's leveled half a goddamn city. Some people had to have died there, you know. So and in Ghostbusters two, hell, price people died in the blackout, and the Ghostbusters caused that. So, and, uh, I don't know, Afterlife, well, I mean, technically he was dead before he came back to life, but, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Shandor, he definitely died. Whenever goes like, yeah, I'm not split, <laughs> not sharing the throne with you, it splits him in half. So, and all the guys are just suicided down the, the shaft there. So maybe to your point, maybe we'll see. I, I will bet that we'll see one of the three that are still left die in this movie. Well, I, I do at least give them credit that we're not like Vigo the Carpathian Part 2. Yeah, because that was actually what was originally reported after the after Afterlife. was like the people making it were talking about using Vigo again. And so I'm glad someone was like, no, guys, come on. Like, we'll give you a pass because you, you, you overcame Ghostbusters 2016. And you, you still told a original story with with Gozer 2.0. Um, Cause it was not a retelling of the same story by any means. Yeah. So from the trailer, we have our three guys that are still left. We have, I think everybody from afterlife, the mom, the kids, Paul Rudd. And then we've got a few new folks. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, seeing, uh, Oh, I've completely forgotten. It's Patton Oswald. Actually, does not fill me with confidence uh, be because nice. he seems to basically be in everything and is in a whole bunch of really shitty things, and well, just kind of seems to be random background guy that you cast. And I'm like, you could have found anyone else. Like, I don't see how he's actually going to contribute meaningfully to this. Well, it would have been nice to see like Rick Moranis come back in some sort of meaningful role, and he might still. We don't know. Uh, but I think he's largely retired. Although I, he did come back for that Mint Mobile commercial, so maybe. Well, I know he's retired because he, he takes care of his kids and all that. And I, like, I commend him for that. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but it'd be great if he was just like a cameo because. Yeah, and like, a, and, and he might be. You know, he might. You know, the other one, they might have been like, "Come on, Rick! Like, you're an important piece of the puzzle. Like, we we can't ever have uh, Harold Ramis back, but like, you're still here. Like, you know, just like Sigourney Weaver in the in the last one, just being it for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah, just a cameo of some sort. Um, just be, you know, something like, man, you got turned into the dog too? Sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, it'd be nice to see him. Uh, it's nice that we have a new villain. It's definitely going like a weird, different way we haven't seen before with the ice stuff. Though it did rain a little bit of Vigo in that because you had the ooze that fed off negative uh, emotion. And now you've got the ice. I supposedly fits yeah. up here. I mean, we'll we'll have to see how that actually fits into the plot, but yeah, maybe. And then Pat and I was like, "Isn't this cool?" Yeah, so that that's what I'm talking about right there. Like, no. Uh, he needs to stick to being the penguin in uh, <laughs> <laughs> in uh, Pete Holmes's <laughs> Batman stuff. He's like, "No, he's dead." <laughs> Sorry if you haven't seen that. It's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, he's got some newer videos now of him firing various members of the event of the Justice League. But uh, yeah, uh, now also we've got uh, I can never remember this guy's name. He was in the Eternals. Uh, he was the the guy who was pretending to be an actor. Something starts with an N. His last name's Kumar. Kumal. Oh, yeah. uh, he's in it. Uh, See how that goes. I'm kind of 50-50 on him. I didn't have a problem with him in the Eternals. 
And I thought he did his role in uh, the Obi Wan Kenobi show. I thought he was actually pretty decent in that. And the uh, the episodes of Silicon Valley, I don't know what the hell it's called on HBO. He was pretty good in that. So we'll see. You know, just have to see what he what he's playing. Yeah, and I like so far that the trailer has kept everything pretty ambiguous. You don't know quite what's. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get a full reveal of the creature, whatever it is. Uh, it looked kind of feminine to me, but we'll see. We did get uh, new red jumpsuits. Yeah, yeah, new red jumpsuits. Uh, probably because it's like you know frigid outside. And okay, I guess they you know like well if we had the regular ones like you wouldn't even be able to see the actors because they just blend in with the background because it's that color. But overall, I have positive vibes about. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, the only th- the only thing that even gives me pause is Patton Oswalt, and as long as it's small doses, it's probably going to be fine. But no, oh, I, I, I did like him in Agents of Shield when he played him and his brother, and his brother gets murdered by Grant. Ward. Yeah, I, like there's some things he's fine in, and it's more just a matter of like you could have picked anybody. Like this is this is like if if you're just tell me we're just going to generically fill this role, Patton Oswalt is generically filling that role to me. You know, of just like the random background guy that's kind of a fanboy that's going to have a few jokes and then either die or he's a clone or something. And it's like, you know, you could have gotten anybody else. Like, yeah. like let's let's really piss off the fans of the 2016 Ghostbusters and get Chris Hemsworth in that role. But no one else from that movie, you know. Uh, no, I actually wouldn't mind cameos of, those, of the women from that movie, you know. Just to, you know, I haven't watched the movie. Here it's terrible. But it was made. It is technically it's well, not part of the it's not part of the canon, but it is part of the franchise. So if they want to bring him in as cameos, I don't have a problem with that. This is what we need to do. We need to get somebody that's listening into this. If you really want us to review the 2016 Ghostbusters movie, leave a comment in the you know down below and tell us review the Ghostbusters 2016 movie, and we'll. Um, I mean, we'll have to buy some more beer before I sit down and watch. Yeah, it. Yeah, probably. But I will Maybe sit. We, we will sit down and watch it. So, yeah, uh, okay. So, so what else? What other? I know I've watched all the trailers, but I'm not trying hard to struggle to remember what. All right. So uh, some of the others are actually in the streaming section because they're not movies. Well, that's so, okay. Let's just let's throw these trailers out here. Let's just. Well, okay. All right. Uh, we have a Terminator anime trailer that is literally just like saying, "Hey, there's going to be a Terminator anime series at some point." I did not see that one. It's on. It's for Netflix. It's on their account, so it's official. But like, that's literally all it's saying. It's literally the whole like, "There's no fate but what we make," and it's the same company that made the Street Fighter Two animated movie. So, speaking of animated ones, and the other one, the other one being the "What If" trailer. Yes. What if season two? Which don't even know. Like, what if season one? But when I saw like the uh, death race going on there. Yeah, I'm like, and then I guess was that? I, I guess because it's over. That's me. If it's over uh, Christmas, I guess they're gonna have a holiday theme to it as well. Well, I mean, they did with the Hawkeye episodes because uh, I think the one that came out on like around the week of Christmas or right then is the one that has the kingpin, the one that has the 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 theme song from the Grinch talking about the kingpin. Yeah, you know, and this is this can be released daily. And then yeah, I saw that, and then. Um, Seeing uh, Killmonger as Black Panther, yeah, um, which I get. I mean, obviously, they're, I get why they did that, but um, nothing I can really say. There's, no, they're, they're, I, I give them credit for a, throwing a lot of randomness into it, like the Mandarin versus Odin. Actually, I, I, I assume that was Shan Chi. Yeah, Chi I will. We'll see. Uh, saw uh, the the one crazy Doctor Strange. He was definitely in a couple scenes. Uh, so who the, was the, the, one, w- the one that absorbed too many demon things? So who was the one woman in that? The um, I'm assuming the Native American one. Oh, well, if it's Native American, it's almost definitely Echo then, because she's Native yeah. American. Because um, they had her like front and center, and it just kind of like. Yeah, I mean, it could be her. I'd, I'd have to watch it again to say for certain, but it's it's probably Echo. It's everybody with the glowing eyes and all that stuff. So. Um, is there any other trailers? There was a new trailer for Rebel Moon, which will be on watch, Netflix. I did not watch that one. Which appears to be like all the sci-fi tropes all together. So, could be good. Zack Snyder's directing it. It's part one of two. This is going to be two movies. I think it's two movies. Um, 
I don't know. I'm willing to give it a shot. I think it's basically his take on Star Wars with a bunch of other things thrown in. So, Well, what they need to do is they need to... And I, we talked about this in the last one where there's a comic about the original uh, the original script for Star Wars. Yeah. They need to make a, a show about that and really screw with people's minds. And be like, you know, obviously in the trailer crawl or whatever, be like, this is no by no means actually Star Wars. This was the original <laughs> concept of Star Wars. Here you go. Yeah. But... No, I mean, I'm glad to start seeing trailers and stuff out again, but um, I think we're, I think this this year is pretty much done for... Oh, know. it's not going to be just this year. Like, it's, this is going to, we're going to be slim on, on movie and TV entertainment. It's not like random foreign stuff on Netflix for like the next year and a half because of the strike. Yeah, I mean, well, that's probably why, like, really the only trailer worth talking about it before all of these came out was the Godzilla trailer. Yeah. Uh, because being foreign, they're like, whatever your writer's strike and you know, yeah, we don't care. Yeah. And, uh, I, I like ghostbusters apparently was supposed to be out before the end of this year. I'm assuming they pushed it back cause they realized they've got nothing. And so they've got to space these things out now. Cause there's only one MCU movie slated for next year. That's Deadpool three. Probably going to be the best one. And then, like, the next year there's, like, four. But there's only, like, one for next year. So, uh, yeah, kind of a little side note of something I saw the other day. Uh, A bunch of deleted scenes from Revenge of the Sith that show just, like, just how manipulative Palpatine was to Anakin. Pretty interesting. Because one of them is a scene where, like, several of the senators are there in his office trying to convince him to, to not, like take ultimate power essentially. And one of them is Senator Amidala and, and Anakin's there, you know, very much in like Vader emperor kind of mode, you know? And, um, yeah, they're like, Hey, you know, we really don't think you should just like completely control the military and the Jedi. And he's just kind of like, you know, the Senate just has to have faith. I'll do the right thing. And they're like, but he's like, I said, the Senate will just have to have faith. I'll do the right thing good day. And so they all leave and he's like, so Anakin, uh, you know, these people need to be watched, especially Senator Amidala. And he's like, begins to imply that Obi-Wan is hooking up with her. And so Anakin has another vision and it's of her dying. Then he sees Obi-Wan there and he's like, and so it's all these scenes are basically Palpatine trying to convince Anakin that the Jedi are evil that Padme is cheating on him and that she's cheating on him with Obi-Wan. And so, like, it's several scenes building up to that. So whenever you get to that final fight on Mustafar, it's got an entirely different context. But now it's it's not just Anakin, like, I'm throwing in with this guy, but it's also like, you fucked me over, time to die. So, it's interesting. They definitely should have been left in the movie. Plus, it's the same woman that plays Mon Mothma that plays her in, like, all the other stuff now. So. But, uh, yeah, no, that's very interesting. Also, we have a... Let's see, let me make sure I'm done with the trailers before I move on to what I'm about to say. Yeah, I think that's it for the trailers. So we do have plenty of other movie news, though. Uh, the Marvels apparently did very terrible at the box office over the weekend. Below expectations. Uh, it made, like, $47 million instead of... 50 or 60 that's for that's domestic to the u.s and uh and we will be providing if we do go and watch we will be providing some sort of review in some sort of format i don't know if we'll do it in the car because i'll probably have my youngest with me and as much as i you know as much as i'd like to have you know wouldn't mind him being in a video i just don't know what he's going to say so probably not going to be in the car but we may try to do a conversation with uh, me, Bobby, and oh, and if he does go, yeah, gotta figure that out. Um, but I, I would say, you know, obviously, go to see the movie for yourself if you think that it'd be something you're interested in. Don't let others immediately, but you obviously can't also not take what other people say as bad because if everybody says this movie sucks, I say it probably sucks. I mean, to be honest, and again. Back to our point with, like, the Madam Web is 
is the problem is, is that with a lot of these is that they're taking people and just making them unbelievable. They're not making them act like people act. Yeah. And I think that's probably the better way to explain it. So those, so all those poor people that stopped listening after we were like, man, they're just bashing this movie like or the show or whatever. We're not doing it. I'm saying is that in a movie where you're trying to base it in some form of reality, even if it's superhero reality, people are still going to act like people. They're not going to... Unless you are a Superman who shouldn't act like Superman, he shouldn't, you know, act like a ruler, a tyrannical whatever, because he's got the power to do it. Um, people have a certain way of acting. People don't, I mean... It's all kind of funny meme about Superman the other day. It's pretty good. It was a guy who just started reading comics. Superman's my favorite character. The guy's been reading comics for five years. It was like... Oh, a French toast man over here with the power to shoot cinnamon sparkles out of his ass is my favorite character. The guy that's been reading comics for 30 years. Superman's my favorite character. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Like, you start there and you're going to eventually wind your way back there. Well, I mean, to I'll be honest, what makes Superman a compelling character is the fact that he has all this power and he chooses to not. Right. And which is why Luther's the, the perfect, like, counter to him. He's the guy who wants all that power but who, in a way, already has all that power because of his money and his political influence and everything, and chooses to use it all to fight Superman. Well, his original uh, motivation is that Superman made him go bald. Yeah, that's one of them. They need to bring that back. Anyways. Yeah. uh, What were you talking about before you mentioned that? I was talking compelling characters. Yeah, this, uh, this brought up the Madam Web thing. It was the trailers. We were talking about going to see the movie. Uh, yeah, I was talking about don't just discount the movie. I mean, go watch it for yourself and get give an honest opinion. Because the other thing I feel bad is that there are people that that work on these movies that generally put their time in. They're expecting, you know, I mean, there's people's jobs and stuff. And unfortunately, you know, like I feel sorry for like the key grip because they're doing their job like. That's the one position I always forget what they what it actually is, but I think it has to. Well, I'll say, I'll say, all, all I know is the grip has to be a very strong individual because we're in Tropic Thunder. We're gonna be talking to Les Grossman. He's like, "Is is the is the key grip there, or is, is the big grip there?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Punch him in the face." And the grip goes, "Sorry, boss." Just <laughs> <laughs> and this is this giant dude. <laughs> well. You know, okay, how about that person that has to make sure there's continuity between scenes where they have to sit there and make sure... The writer? Sure. Well, no, I mean the, like, visual continuity. Oh, you mean, like, make sure... The person whose job is, like, make sure the clock's at the same time yes. and, like, all the little stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's say it's that person. I mean, that person has no influence on what movie they're working on. It's just they get hired on, they do it. Yeah. I'm not saying that you should go watch a movie that sucks just for those people, but... I, what I'm saying is, is that well, I, I, I would, I would, call, I would provide that there's a third, a second option now. Well, there's always a second option. There's a third option. Well, I just want to say that if you have an interest in seeing the movie, don't let others discourage you from going to watch it. Just because it's going to suck, <laughs> just because it's going to suck, doesn't mean that you can't still go and enjoy it. And you know, sometimes movies suck so bad they're actually worth watching. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be one of them. for the. It's not going to be, it's not gonna be Velocipasture. But, uh, no, I was going to say, if you're if you're, if you're you're on the fence on the subject, wait till it's on Disney+. Plus. You know, that's you're paying I, for the service for a reason. So. That's what I'm going to do for Quantumania when I finally decide to sit down and watch it. You should watch it. You know, and the funny thing is, like, I'll sit there and stream YouTube for hours because thinking, you know, I'm probably going to go to bed here in a little bit, then, like, Three hours in, I'm like, you know, I could have watched the movie by now. Oh, uh, the, the classic, the classic blunder when it comes to streaming. Um, but yeah, so, uh, so initially, you're gonna find this interesting, Jim. All right. Some of you folks are too. Gonna make me sound more like a sexist, but here goes. Uh, like initially, they were like, "Oh man, if only the men had shown up to watch this movie." Yeah, it turns out, sixty-one percent of the audience was men. So. Men did show up. It was the women that didn't show up. And and again, again, it the, the biggest thing that people are coming away from this. And I seen a review that said, if you don't like this movie, then you're part of the problem. Yeah, Pretty, see, that's part of the problem. 
And see, that's not how it goes. And I'm not saying that, okay, so again, here's another more modern example. Alita Battle Angel. Great movie, female lead, someone that has a character to her. And hopefully it gets a sequel at some point, because it was a damn good movie. Yeah, it'd be nice if it would. Um, but there's another example, a very modern example, that you can still write a movie, and I say modern, it's like 2012. Um, you can still write movies that have female leads and all that stuff when you make them people and not machines and not yeah. things that are not. And the thing is, is like, this should have been, a, you know, okay, I think Brie Larson in the first uh, Captain Marvel movie, I think they wrote her badly. I don't think Brie Larson as a actress is a bad actress. I think she has a lot of talent, and I think she could have been good as Captain Marvel if written better. Same thing I feel like with uh, um, Anakin. Um, Aiden Christensen? Aiden Christensen. I think if they wrote him better, he wouldn't... Like, they made him a whiny bitch. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we've seen him as better, I mean, so... Yeah, I mean, I've seen him in Jumper, and I don't, I don't think Jumper's a great movie. Well, I mean, even in Star Wars. Yeah. Like, we, we've seen him... A little bit as a little bit in the Obi Wan series, and we've seen him in Ahsoka, where he didn't, you know, aside from Butterface in the first part where we saw him, you know, like it's clear that he could have done better. That's probably on the writing and directing. As much as I like George Lucas, you know, that's mostly on him. And I've seen some of the dialogue supposedly from the Marvels. I'm waiting to see if it's in there, and I'm like, who wrote this? Nobody talks like this. And that's again, we can go back to the, the prequels. Somebody needed to go to George Lucas and say, George, people don't talk like this. And this is the one thing that I saw that uh, both Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford said. It was like, nobody says this kind of stuff. I mean, we understand it's future tech. It's it's another universe stuff. But you're still writing for an audience that's here in on Earth. Right. You're going to have to write it in a way that people actually talk. And, you know, right. The, it's, it's dialogue that's fine for a novel, but it's not so fine for actually having a live human being say it. You know, it's like 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 Marvel Comics. The way Thor speaks in the comics, that just wouldn't work. How about the? You know, I mean, or, or or if it did, it would be like as a joke, yes. briefly, and then he switches to you know closer to modern English or something. And to actually have someone, even if it was Stanley himself, say Excelsior at some point, everyone's going, "What the hell is he talking about?" And a handful would be like, "You mean that ship from Star Trek?" You know. Oh yes, one of the best ships ever designed. For yeah, Star with Trek. transwarp drive. Hey, the transwarp drive had potential. It just, unfortunately, uh, Scotty sabotaged Scotty it. Scotty sabotaged it. <laughs> Speaking of that, right before Bobby came, I was watching the uh, scene where Scotty goes onto the holodeck. Of yeah. Enterprise D, and God, I love that line. He's just like, he's like, you know, I want to load a, a simulation of the, you know, the U.S. or U, U, USS or the the bridge of the Enterprise. Yeah, it's like the NC seventeen oh one. No A, no B. No C and no bloody D, and that's the original, the original one. Yeah, he's... Burn- well, we had a, a little bit of a technical malfunction there. Luckily, uh, we caught it moments, minute, yeah. moments after we had happened. But camera died on us, and yeah, uh, yeah, we. I think we only lost a couple minutes of stuff there. So, so anyways, like, well, what I was ending off was that yeah, I was watching the um, little short clip of uh, Scotty talking about the uh, going on the holodeck and. You had mentioned about the ale that he was drinking. Yeah, where... it was because uh, just prior to that, he'd gone to Ten Ford, which is the bar on the Enterprise, and uh, Guinan was not there in this episode, uh, so he was trying to get something to drink, and he's like, "Oh, here, what's this?" And he takes a drink. He's like, "Oh, what the hell is this?" Like, "That's sent the hall." He's like, "Sent the hall," you know. He's... Then Data comes over, and he's like, oh, "I think Guinan keeps some real liquor here somewhere," and so he gives it to him. It's just kind of a glowing neon green color. And he, I think he drinks it first, and then uh, he's like, "Well, what is this, lad?" And Data's like, like trying to find the label, and he like smells it. Then he takes a drink. He's like, "I, I it, it's green," because he has no idea what the hell it is. <laughs> and it's it's potent, whatever it is. Because by the time he gets to the holodeck, Scotty's just about shit faced. So, so, anyways, what did we leave off on? Uh, I think we were just talking about how. Uh, the the Marvels could actually be decent uh, because I've seen some of the reviews say it's actually not bad. They don't. I've not seen any that say it's great other than Shills, but 
I have heard that Brie Larson does have more of a more of a personality in this one. You can even see that in the trailers. And I mean, I like Monica Rambeau as a character too. And I liked her, and I watched all of the Marvels finally, or, or Miss Marvel, Miss, Miss, yeah. uh, which was good, by the way. If you guys haven't seen it, now it is it's geared a little bit more towards kids. Cause she's a teenage character, and uh, uh, it does kind of hit on the fact she's a Muslim in the U.S. She's from Pakistan. And, you know, there's some ins and outs involving that because, you know, she goes to a mosque and everything. And, well, at one point, damage control, is that what the hell they're called? People that, like, the few things they're in, they're trumped up to be this big, important agency, but, like, they're only in a handful of things. And so you're left wondering, like, who the fuck are these guys? Wasn't that, wasn't that who the vulture was supposedly yeah. working for? Yeah, or while stealing stuff from, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's Spider-Man winds up in their vault. And so anyway, one of them like goes into the mosque and it's like, ah, search this place. And you know, one of the people there is like, no, like you got a warrant. Like you realize you're a government agents trying to storm into a mosque just to randomly start harassing people. And it's like, yeah, that's really not a good look now, is it? Especially in light of current circumstances. But, uh, yeah, so you get a few things like that. But you don't really get any kind of like there's there's no like bashing Christians or other religions or anything at all like that in there, uh, and they are they are definitely progressive Muslims because like uh, her friend who's a woman gets elected to the council there at the mosque, so you know they're they're not fundamentalists, they're not it's not how they're depicted, and, uh, so yeah. But it, overall, it's 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 a good show, it's entertaining. Uh, Kamal is a decent character, interesting background. Um, it's implied that she is a mutant, but initially they think her powers, well, they're, they're pretty sure her powers come from the fact that her great-grandmother is actually from a different dimension. It was, it was a group of characters that came over. She died. Now the rest of them are trying to get back, and for them to get back, they're going to cause a lot of destruction in the process. That's why she's trying to be like, no, don't. Uh, but she fell in love with a guy on our side, and you know, had a kid, and that's where her family line comes from. And initially, they think her powers come from this bracelet thing, which is part of the plot to the Marvels. The Kree woman has the other one. And, uh, so... Are they the Negabands? No, they're not the Negabands. I, I don't think they're the Negabands. They could be. Um, uh, hadn't thought of that. But, uh, they, uh... So she gets her powers, but one of her friends is like, as she's learning her powers, he's like, you know, kind of running tests on her. He's like, no, the power is coming from inside you. It's not coming from the bracelet. And so her powers are different than what they are in the comics. She's not like super stretchy. She can make like energy things. And some of those she does like a big stretchy fist kind of thing with, you know, it's an homage to what she does in the comics. I wondered why the change for that. I don't know, but they obviously knew the change they were going to make in the comics. Because in the comics now, she's a mutant. She died and the Krakoans resurrected her as a mutant. She's no longer an inhuman. So her, her cachet just went up like 500 points for that because no one likes the inhumans. But uh, anyway, what's funny is towards the end, he's like, you know, I think it's a mutation. And like, there's like some songs playing that goes, do, 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 do. And I was like, yes, you've, you've sold me. This was worth six episodes just for that. So, yeah, her, like I said, her show is entertaining. You know, you got you to gotta realize what it is. It's geared more towards a younger audience, but... You know, there are high stakes. People definitely get killed all over the place in this show. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's worth a watch. So, and, and the girl playing her, she, she's, from what I know of her from the comics, she's perfect. And I, as I understand it, she's actually a huge fan of Kamala Khan from the comics. And so, like, you, you can tell. But, uh, no, it's some interesting things in the show, though. Because, like, the first part, they're going to an, an Avengers convention. Like the first one that they have, because like like that's the kind of thing that would happen in a universe with actual superheroes, well, you know. Funny funny story in the Avengers video game. That's the first level. Is Kamala is going to an Avengers convention where she wrote a story about Captain America fighting crocodiles in the sewers. Well, here she's going because she's going to enter the cosplay contest as Captain Marvel, as Carol Danvers, and that's when her powers activate. Is whenever she puts on the uh, the bracelet thing that her grandmother sent to her. So. And then there's a girl there at the school that she ends up saving her life, even though earlier the girl had been like a total dick to her. And the girl's like a big uh, social media type. And so they're all kind of surprised. And later on, she's like, yeah, I knew it was you. And like, why did you turn her in? Like, you saved my life. Like, I'm not just going to be a shithead to you and turn you into those people. Like, I'm only alive because of you. I'm not that big of an asshole. 
See, people acting like people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. So so it's good. So I I have high hopes for her in the movie, and I like Monica Rambeau from uh, WandaVision. So I'm just wondering if we're going to see her mom, because thanks to the internet, we know there's like. Temporal, shena- temporal and or interdimensional shenanigans are going to occur before the end of this movie. So, yeah. We'll see. If everything goes as planned, we will go watch that. So, in other MCU news, uh, the word on the street is there's some massive reshoots for Captain America 4. And they tried to kind of downplay it, but they're like, we need reshoots like Act 1 and 2 and 3. And everything. And, like, most stories follow a three-act structure. So, yeah, basically everything. And uh, Which is there's, there's, there's mixed stories as to why. Uh, some are saying it's because, well, apparently it had horrible testing for the finished product. So, but some people are, it's, but it's about the why. Some people are saying it's because they're just not buying Sam as Captain America, which yeah. that would be unfortunate because, you know, I like Anthony Mackie. And, and, and for one of the things that we talk about where they have the material to go on, Falcon becoming Captain America is a... It's a, it's, it's a comic thing, but even, yes. but even if it weren't, it still fits with the internal logic because cause Steve Rogers out of the picture. There's only really two people that could potentially go to, and Bucky's, I think, still a fugitive. Yeah, I so, mean, Bucky, don't get me wrong, I, I, I would be all down for seeing Thor 5 involve the Serpent, and Bucky Barnes being Captain America, and then being killed in that crisis, because that's what happens in the comics, is I believe that, I yeah. believe Sin kills. Sure. But then, then we'd have to introduce Sin somewhere, right? I don't think she's in the MCU anywhere, right? It would be perfect. I mean, Red Skull was a, you know, one of the few, I would say as a villain, was a, you know, I would say likable, but I don't want to say a Nazi is likable. No, the Red Skull is not likable. He's one of the few comic book villains that's allowed to just be an absolute evil motherfucker. Like, I know, but that, that's, that's what I'm saying. That, that's, I was trying to think of the right way to say it, that as a villain, he, 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 he was, I mean, I think he was perfect for the villain that he was. And Sin... I don't. I don't know. I don't think Sin ever quite followed, um, or Stady. As as far as I Sin. understand it, he initially like cast her out because part of that whole ideal that I'm not going to really go down the rabbit hole of that particular ideology, but it's it's very masculine centric. Like yes. women's jobs is to take care of the kids and have kids and maintain the home front, whereas the men go out and do the manly things. It's very very hierarchical in that structure, and so he wanted a son. And so I think eventually he does warm up to her, kind of realizing, like, probably not going to have any other kids. Half the time I'm a fucking robot, so, you know. Or the other half, I'm, I've got, you know, a mutant's brain in my brain. Yeah. So it, Red Skull has undergone some weird things, folks. <laughs> but, uh, but no, if, if they did that, like... But then, yeah, but then she kind of teamed up with Crossbones, because Crossbones was a true believer as far as for the Red Skull. But uh, yeah, I don't think he's like I'm, I don't think he's like Baron von Strucker. Von Strucker kind of toned down a lot of the uh, a lot of the '30s German ideals, and because that actually in uh, I think it's in it's either in Secret Warriors or somewhere in there, he realizes back during Secret Invasion that some scrolls have infiltrated Hydra, and even point blank tells him there's a point in time I would have just killed you on principle because you're not human and you're not Aryan. He's like, but I've moved past that. I'm going to kill you because he infiltrated Hydra, though, and gets the Satan Claw out and takes him out. Oh, jeez. Uh, comics, <laughs> kids. Comics. <laughs> but no, I mean, I mean, as a Thor storyline, that would be a great way to end out, though, because the, the whole thing with the serpent... Is it, is it, is it boar? Yes. No, it's, 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 a, yes. it's a boar? It's, his, it's, a Odin's, it's Odin's brother. Yes. I think boar was, I think boar was their dad. Um, and then you have the Hammers... Yeah, I, I could see like, I mean, a great way to in- introduce some like some of the mutants and some of the Fantastic Four is you would have Hulk is Null, uh, Thing with the hammer, and I can't remember what his uh, Sin who becomes Skadi, 
Yeah. You know, um, the Juggernaut got one of them, uh, mm-hmm. which is which is what caused Sidorak, which is what caused Colossus to convince Sidorak to abandon him and make him the Juggernaut. Yeah. Because it's the competing power. Yeah. Because um, because was it Thing was he was he Angier? Sounds right. I could be wrong, and and I apologize. If I, I know most of that from HeroClix. Exactly, because I had <laughs> I had the um, Juggernaut, I had uh, Hulk, but I did not have Thane. That's Skatey, and who else have it? Titania had one too, right? I want to say yes that an Absorbing Man had one. That's because I think both of them did. Yeah, I could be wrong on that. So. Anyway, it's, it's badass, and it'd be a bad west way for Thor to go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. Yeah, although... And kill Bucky Barnes, and... For, right. for whatever it's worth, if they do make another Thor movie, I really do hope that Thor somehow finds out what happens in Loki Season 2, which I can't talk about because Jim hasn't seen it yet. I know, I'm in. But it's... I, I think Season 2 was actually really good. I, I've seen people really shitting on it online, but I, I really think it was good. And it has a very... has a very bittersweet ending, but it, it feel, feel to me it feels right. So, but anyway, so the competing reason that people are throwing out is that apparently one of the characters, presumably the villain, bears a little bit too much resemblance to a certain former president currently running for the presidency again, the Orange Man. Uh. And apparently someone at Disney was finally like, you know, this guy might be president again. Like, maybe we shouldn't, you know, do this if we want people to actually go watch our movie. Yeah. So in a, in a rare moment of not preaching. But again, that's just what I'm hearing. It could be, could be, any, it could be all kinds of reasons, you know. It could be people don't buy Harrison Ford turning into the Red Hulk, you know, because remember he had to replace uh, William Hurt because he passed away. So, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, at some point, Harrison Ford needs to stop acting. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, as a, a a person that appreciates the elderly, at some point, you just need well, to... Well, he needs to stop being in action roles. He can still be the elder statesman type. And I, I've seen him play an old man in some other movies. He doesn't. He, he does okay at it, you know. He can do that. But then, uh, like, actually, there's a movie with Chadwick Boseman. It was uh, about Jackie Robinson. It's a pretty good movie, but he can't. But Thunderbolt Ross is an acting. You know, it's not like they're like the military. It's not like hey, we're going to have this this dec- you know this decrepit old. Well, man. he's not a general anymore. He's a he's a cabinet member. Remember, so because because uh, because William Hurt in in one of them uh, in Civil War, he mentions that he's no longer a general because he had like four or five heart attacks or something, and so but now he's back. He's the one who runs. Everything as far as the Sokovia Accords. If, uh, the, if those are still a thing at this point, I don't know. Oh, the Sokovia Accords. So, yeah. Uh, so, that, that's the other reason, like I said, that's circling the internet. Who knows if it's true? Kind of like this next thing I'm about to mention. Oh, Supposedly, oh. Pedro Pascal has been cast as Mr. Fantastic in the Fantastic Four movie. Which I don't understand why they recast after... I thought a pretty decent after the after everyone after they had the guy that everyone on the internet said should play him and did a pretty decent job as the smartest man alive. Like I mean, yeah. it's a very short role, uh, so but he got it, turned into spaghetti. Which also shows though how you can be the smartest man in the world but be an idiot at the same time. Because that's Reed Richards in a nutshell, right there. Because um, Doom will never admit that Reed Richards is smarter than him, but Reed, he knows that Reed Richards. Intelligence is smarter than him, but Doom has the other half. He's super intelligent, and he has the common sense to back it up. Yeah. Versus, versus Reed, who's just... I, I think it's debatable that Reed's actually the more intelligent of the two, but... Well, I, I, D- D- Doom embraces all options. That's exactly that's what That's why I, he has magic also. That's what I was saying. Reed will throw magic out. Doom, all around. Well, he needs it to go fight Mephisto to free his mother's soul from hell. Yeah. Quite possibly one of the best comics out there involving Doom and Doctor Strange, by the way. Pretty good. Um, Triumph and Torment, I believe is what it's called. Pretty good. Um, well, there's there one comic where supposedly 
Doom had was talking to his mother, but in the background, it was like the maker was like, like working the whole thing in the background. I I, I could be wrong on the whole story, but I just remember there's one where it's like, are you gonna tell? Or what are you, you like gonna let me tell him or something like that? And the maker's back there, so Reed Richard is just like. Well, that sounds, that sounds like a comic I've read, but it wasn't The Maker. Was it not? It was Mephisto. Maybe it was. I don't know. That's, uh, it sounds like that's... Um, the infamous Iron Man? Infamous Iron Man. I could yeah. be wrong. Like that. Yeah, Mephisto's the one behind all that. That's the... Because that's the, the, the... That, that culminates in, in like one of the greatest things ever. Because Doom, this was after the Secret Wars, possibly the greatest comic Marvel has put out in like 20 years. Uh... Doom is like, hey, I'm going to become a hero now. Iron Man's out of the picture because he's dead for a while. I'll become infamous Iron Man. Makes like an armored suit like Iron Man, but still uses magic and everything else. Starts beating up a bunch of other villains. And then like his mother shows up and a bunch of other things happen. And he realizes it. He finally realizes it's Mephisto. And you see like this big battle sequence. And Mephisto's like kind of talking to us, the audience. He's like, well, in approximately five seconds, Doom's going to whoop my ass pretty good here. He's like, but, just so everyone knows what's going on here, I cannot let Doom become a good guy. Oh, no. His soul belongs to me, and I'm not going to let anything get in the way of that. So I'm going to completely sabotage all of his efforts here. That's what I've been doing throughout this whole thing. And he's like, no, his ass is mine when he dies. So it's just like, man. You're a petty, vindictive dick. Like, that's what I expect from the devil, but... Well, the thing is, is that he's not the devil. Yeah, that's, that depends on which, which version you're going with, but... Because supposedly he's a uh, deviant. That's that's from Earth-X. Yeah. Because in the Earth-X timeline, he was the first of the deviants. And he believes himself to be the devil. He actually created all of the other demons. Like Dormammu, Zarathos, all those guys. All to obfuscate the fact that he's the main one. Because everyone's always busy fighting all the others, and they think, oh, Mephisto's just one of many. It's No, no. The others are all pawns. Mephisto's and, the game master. I mean, hell, that makes a... You know, and you think of Dormammu as a fucking badass, and... Yeah, well, I mean, he's powerful, but, like, Mephisto is literally one of the... Depending on where we're on the timeline, one of the two or three people that can freely move between the realm of the living and the realm of the dead. The other being Death and sometimes Thanos. So, in, in the Earth-X timeline, they were referred to as the Unholy Triumvirate. The, uh, the Supreme Intelligence was trying to become the fourth wheel. It didn't work out for him. He got on the trike instead. Yeah, yeah he's just, he's just kind of laying there in the land of the dead until Captain Marvel finds him and kills him to free the souls of all the Kree. So, uh, well, I'll do a video on Earth-X one of these days, guys. It's, it's wild. You should all read it. But, uh, well, that's like the um, I, I, I always see these these comic strips talking about uh, when the Hulk was possessed by the one below all. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's uh, that's fairly recent. That's last like five years or so. It looks creepy as hell. Is all I gotta say. Yeah, I, I don't follow the Hulk. I just know that that was a thing. But yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. You have the one below all and the one above all. Yeah, I mean, you know, the one above all is obviously supposed to be God. So. Not, no. And not the gods, but God. Yes, capital G, like the God of Abraham, God. So, comics. but, uh, yeah, comics. Uh, but yeah, so, who knows why the reshoots are happening for Captain America 4, but it sounds like they're reshooting almost the entire movie. Um, again, I, again, I really hope it's not because people didn't like Anthony Mackie, because I like him as Falcon. I think he did a decent job as Cap. He had a kind of shit script for the final episode, but... Yes, they've got to do better, though. Yes, that whoever wrote that line, like probably the same person that wrote Storm's line and X Men. Because I mean, never get it. Never, I don't want to. Don't ever want to take it down a political path. But the thing with both, both anybody talking politics is when they have a, a, a something they want to state. You know, like oh, this needs to be fixed. Well, how does it need to be fixed? It just needs to be fixed. What kind of solution is you need to do better? How do you want me to do better? Yeah, I, like if if that would have been written by if both sides would have been written to be snarky and whatnot, you know the answer would have been this senator like, man, why didn't I think of that? 
Like, the hell do you mean do better, jackass? Like, yeah, I've been I've been intentionally not doing better. Which you know, given the current state of politics in the U.S., I believe that. But well, I'm just saying, like, I'd like to believe they work marginally better in fictional land. But that's also, but maybe not. I don't know. Well, that and again, not talking to either side of politics. That's why term limits need to be a thing because uh, yeah, there, there's because people would do better if they only had a period of time because then your impact has to be you know, like say if you know your impact has to happen in a short amount of time. You can't be like. I'm going to be a career politician, and then how I have my entire lifetime, it's like, okay, I can only be a representative for this amount of time. I can only be a senator for this amount of time. Now you have a clock that's ticking that says, I've got this amount of time. Yeah. But again, not talking politics, but, you know. It's, yeah. Well, I, don't think I, I don't think I'm talking to anything political. It's more of just. No, fact. no. I, I mean, it's. From everything I understand, the founder's outlook. Yeah, assuming one wants to go down the road of what they cared about, which I happen to, but uh, they never viewed people as being as that being a career. You well, know, it's like what you're talking about. Like, you know, it's, it's meant to be your public servant. And I think you do your piece and then go back to your job. I mean, I think that's exactly the reason why the president has a term limit, because they said we don't need somebody in that kind of power for so long to do stuff. So. Yeah. And what took it to get the term limit was someone staying there that long. This is FDR, yeah, FDR, right? FDR, yeah. Because up to that point, everyone had just followed the custom because uh, Washington had two terms, then he left. Now, that's because he planned on going and buying up a bunch of land that he had kind of vaguely maybe stolen, but, you know, he had his reasons for leaving. But, you know, the, the founders weren't saints. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but then FDR is like, as a war, boys, like, I can't leave. Besides, I can't move too fast. So, that's, that's a polio joke there for you folks who weren't alive in the 30s. Well, I just wonder if there was a group of people that said, you've, uh, you've, you've stayed your power, then he does a, a 720 from a sitting position. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> As he strikes down the, I don't know, it wouldn't be the Jedi Council, it'd be uh, his cabinet. <laughs> the cabinet, maybe? <laughs> some, some Senate subcommittee? I don't know. <laughs> oh. I am the Senate. <laughs> No, you're the president. <laughs> uh, I think I drink some more beer, I guess. Yeah. So, anyway, like I said, uh, so Pedro Pascal, we we're on to that. Sorry, uh, Fantastic Four. Now, I think Pedro Pascal has the acting ability to play Mister Fantastic. Like, you basically have to be—you have to come across as smart, or sorry, intelligent, but aloof. And just not quite a hundred percent getting human interaction, but not like to the point of like the main character from Bones, you know, who only kind of like vaguely understands it in the abstract until she falls in love with the FBI agent that she works with. Uh, that's been on BBC a lot lately, so I've been watching a lot of episodes of that. So, uh, yeah, Peter Pascal, I think, could easily do the job. It's just the videos I've seen talking about internally some of the other names that got thrown around they were talking to. Like Adam Driver, I'd much rather have him if he was the choice. You know, because I think he could do it. Or the guy that they already had is. Well, yes, obviously, is it uh, John Krasinski? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's he's the choice. But assuming we don't have him, uh, it'd be not like I I take Adam Driver. You know, and you know, push comes to shove, Pedro Pascal will do a good job. You know, he is a good actor. Yeah, and I mean, luckily, because of the multiverse of madness, there doesn't have to be a specific set of, oh, it can only be these people, because, I mean, obviously you had Captain Carter. Yeah. So, you know, if if that's what we get stuck with, we could definitely get stuck with a lot worse. So, don't plus he's going to have all kinds of times, since I don't think he's coming back to The Mandalorian for season four, from what I see. Because you say they can be worse, there's still three other Fantastic Four members. Um, because you're not wrong, Jim, you're not wrong. Um, so I don't, I don't know the pot, the, you know, the, 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 the plausibility of this, but the plausibility I was trying to say, and I said possibility and plausibility at the same time, uh, is it happened before because when they were talking about casting the little mermaid and people are like, Oh, it's going to be, um, I can't think what her name is, but for the live action, little mermaid. And it, you know, it was it was true. And like I said, I watched The Little Mermaid. I thought it was okay. I don't think the songs were as good, but it was okay. There was 
you know, I think if they would have just explained the fact that all of the daughters in that movie were because of the seven seas, that people would have been like, oh, well, that makes sense because different cultures and stuff, different daughters. Yeah, I didn't see it, but wasn't she like for the Balkans or something? I believe so. So it didn't make quite as much sense, but, you know, they could have just left it. Made her for someplace else? Exactly. Yes. Um, the, there's been talk about a live casting of Hercules. Did you see who they said? Yes, yes, I, I did. And don't get me wrong. Okay, I get that the actor does not need to be strictly from the culture it's from. It's be better if it is, because if you know if you're doing a movie about a certain country, I think the best thing to do would be get an actor or actress from said country to represent that country. Yeah, or or at least someone of a similar appearance, because like because. Well, you know who... Because we're talking about Michael B. Jordan, right? That's, yes. That's the name I heard. So... And who Who is a decent actor. You yeah, know? Again, yeah, exactly. Nothing like, wrong with liked him as Killmonger. Creed. Uh, I didn't watch Creed, but I hear he's great in it. Yes. Uh, thought he was okay as Johnny Storm in that terrible Fantastic Four movie. Uh, I thought he was really good in... Uh, what's the found footage superhero movie? It's him and two other guys. Like they found like an alien thing, and so they all have developed like telekinetic powers. Uh, the Covenant. No. The Chronicle. Oh. Chronicle. Yeah. Chronicle. I thought he was getting that. Some with a C. And, I know. And, and I've seen interviews with him, so I know he's a fan of this kind of stuff. You know. But so I don't want to just be like, no, you know, you shouldn't be that. But like. Okay. Okay. So what I this is what I would expect to happen, and I would honestly understand it happening. Is let's say that this it turns out to be true. Greece, I mean, who's already, you know, obviously suffering some financial hardships of their own. I would, I would be up in arms about this because you're taking Greek. It is Greek, right? Yeah. Okay. Her, 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 Hercules is, uh, his, his foundation is Greek mythology, but the Romans also venerated him tremendously. Okay. So, so. either, either or Greek or Roman, anyone. I would be an up in arms about this. I think it's I think it's in Greek. It's it's where the Heracles and Roman is the, the Hercules part. I think I could be getting those reversed. But yes, I would be up in arms about this because you're taking someone's culture, and for no other reason besides you don't want to. Because what what is the point of? I mean, don't get me wrong. What what motivation is there for Michael B. Jordan to be Hercules? I mean, because the idea is that you're supposed to cast somebody. I'm not saying that he couldn't be Hercules. I'm like they they had Rock as Hercules at one point, right? And you also had um, who was the original one in the or in the '90s show? Kevin Sorbo. Kevin Sorbo, who is notably also not Greek. I, know, at least, well, I don't think he is Sorbo. He might be. Um, like even the Rock, like I was, I. And again, I, I don't even think the Rock was the right casting for that. They just wanted to get somebody that was hulking to play Hercules. The thing is, is that there's two things when you're casting a character. It should be that the the description. So here's a perfect example: Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe was like almost like the perfect casting, like the visual representation of what Harry Potter is supposed to look like. Daniel Radcliffe fit that to almost the T. You know, the idea is that it, it's two things: it's their acting chops and their physical appearance that look like the character that they're playing. Occasionally, a character swap. We talked about this last podcast about Shawshank Redemption. That uh, you said Morgan Freeman's character Red. I don't think suffered too much on that, but I don't think. Yeah, well, I, I think there's I don't also. Think, I don't think the cultural significance of him being Irish. Yeah, I think. Uh, to me, to me, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of nuance and a lot of there's a lot of i'm not 100 i'm not strict on it like as far as whether i like it or not like it depends on the the medium and everything like from a book the big difference between a book and say a comic book a book it's all in your mind now yes the description is in the book typically what the character looks like but you're not going page after page of literally seeing images of what the character is supposed to look like so like a comic yeah. book it's a highly visual medium so it's more jarring Compared to, say, a novel, you know, a novel, it's like, oh, well, that's a different way, okay. And the same with, like, a movie versus, say, a stage play. Stage plays have a long history 
of race and gender swapping characters, usually for some kind of motivation for the story. Uh, or, you ha- or you have ones that just start out like that, like Hamilton, you know, and uh, or the Shakespeare plays. Like any time they change where they're set, they change who the actors are. You know, that's just one of the things they do. Movies, however, are different. They're a stage play. There's a no point in time that you will be deceived that you're wa- that you're doing anything other than watching a play. It's not nearly as immersive as a movie. A movie, there's a part of your brain that thinks these events are actually happening. That we know are fake on screen, but there's a part of your brain that does not know they're fake. It's a far more immersive medium. And so when you make these changes, it's more noticeable, it's more jarring, it sticks with people. And you get people to watch that, and they're like, hey, why does this character look like this over here? And you're like, well, they've always looked like that over there. The question is, why don't they look like that in the movie? You know, because more people see the movie than see the base thing. So that's one of the reasons why I dislike it when it happens in movies. Uh, you know, because it leads to moments like that. You know, you got people like, oh, the Kingpin's black. It's like, no, that was Michael Clark Duncan playing the Kingpin in Daredevil. Like, that was an interpretation, but by and large, he's depicted as a white individual. And, you know, uh, you do get, you, we used to get a lot of the reverse. There used to be a whole lot of whitewashing, and that was bad too. Oh, yeah. You know, and people probably should have said something at the time there too. You know, not probably, people should have. But it happened, it's done, it's over with, we're living now. So, and I, I'm not a big fan. Now, I do have a question. Is this for a Disney version by any chance? I'm assuming it is. Because they, they refer to it as a Hercules live-action remake. So in that case, I would fall back on what I said Disney should do, is take all of their things and be like, look, these all happen in Disneyland. And in Disneyland, it's a multi-ethnic society where everyone gets along, except where they're not going to for these little dramas we're going to play out. And so there, Hercules could be Chinese. You know, doesn't matter. But at the same time, okay, so, and this is me thinking about, like, with, like, Disney World. So Disney World in Epcot. Epcot has the, the uh, what do they call it, the, um, the, the showcase of all of the countries. It's a small world. No, no, no. It's the... Uh, I want to say it's, it's in Epcot, because Epcot stands for the uh, City of Tomorrow. Yeah, I didn't go to Epcot, so... Didn't uh, well, I haven't never been either. I, I just, I, I've, I've, I've been watched, to Disneyland and Disney World, but I never went to Epcot. I've been... I've watched a lot of... I don't know. For some reason, I have this fantasy of, like... Or this, this thing of watching all of the, like... The, the elements uh, that goes into building a theme park. And, like, sure. the, the history and stuff. Like the fact that one of the first Disney World or no Disneyland attractions was uh, a motorboat that you could drive around in the lake. But but Epcot has what they call the um, I guess some showcase. I'm gonna have to look it up. But anyways, it's a pavilion of or it's around this thing where they have like different cultures. And so like they had one where um, when they modified it, they put Frozen in there because it was part of that culture. Like, it, you know, I don't say Norwegian, but I could be wrong on that. It's, it's one of the, uh, God, I can't think what the hell they're called now. The, uh, <laughs> maybe I've had too much of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, God damn. Oh, it'll come to me. Keep going. But anyways, like they put frozen there and I'm like, that makes sense. Like, Scandinavian they, countries. Yes. They, they, so they updated, you know, that's that, um, that section and put Frozen in there. I'm like, that's, that makes sense. But, but what I'm saying is that the initial point of all of that was to showcase all of these different cultures. Yeah. And I think what they're doing at this point is they're, in a sense, almost crapping on these other cultures because it doesn't fit some sort of narrative that they have to fill. And... The thing is, is that Michael B. Jordan, I think, is a great actor. I think they have there's plenty of roles out there that movies and stuff that if they wanted to do a live action remake that he could fit into and make a great movie. And the problem is, is that people know is is they're they're just going for a point scale because they they specifically advertise <laughs> something like that because they know it's a point. It's, yeah, I get a point for this because we yeah. cast this. And, and to be clear. I don't fault Michael B. Jordan for taking the role. No, no, you know, it's money. It, well, yeah, it's money, and also like 
it could actually end up being a decent role, you know, and people will, by and large, people will probably overlook this, and, well, I don't know the way things are going with Disney now, maybe not, but in the past, people would have, by and large, overlooked this and just gone on their way. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a role. You know? No, no, I, and, and I get that, but at the same time, I think, I think as an actor, I would step up. It'd be the same thing. Like if somebody tried to cast me in a role that I would not fit into, I'd be like, why are you casting me in this? This is not. I, I personally be asking that question after I get paid, but yes, I see your point. Well, well, I think especially, and, and they should especially learn from the fact with Snow White because not just because of who they cast, but because the person is bad math in the movie they're in. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you have to, it doesn't have to be your favorite role. But that would be like Nicolas Cage just going, I just can't believe they cast me in this. Like, well, you're the one that. <laughs> and plus. You... <laughs> and hell, he's. Oh, I, just, I just can't even see Nicolas Cage even reacting like that. Well, the fact is, is that he says he supposedly turns down roles. It makes me like wonder what kind of <laughs> movies are they trying to put him in. <laughs> They're like, we're going to do a sequel to Velocipasture. You know, it's like, do you want to be in that? He's like, actually, I don't think he'd turn that one down, to be honest. I wouldn't. Well, I was watching a, a video, or, well, listen to it because I was driving. I wasn't watching it. Um, I watch, when I, I watch videos when I drive. <laughs> uh, this guy, and, and for whatever it's worth, he happened to be a, a black individual. He was complaining about the idea of casting Pedro Pascal. He's like, look, the Fantastic Four are all white. Like, that's the way they were written. And he even pulled up a quote from Stan Lee saying, where Stan Lee said, and I have to paraphrase here, he's like, had Peter Parker started off as a black, Hispanic, whatever, you know, non-white individual, then I wouldn't have a problem with that, but we created him as a white individual. And given how easy it is to create other characters, why are you trying to screw with that? You know, that was just an example. He wasn't talking about Miles Morales. Yeah, I want to uh, say Miles Morales is... Yeah, Miles Morales' biggest problem right now is the fact that they still call him Spider-Man. They need to give him a new code name so that he can be another character, so he can be his own character. Well, I mean, according to Madam Web, we have the problem with, who the hell's Spider-Woman, who the hell's Spider-Girl? Because there's like four of them yeah. now. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, this guy brought up, and he, and he had the perfect the perfect example to prove it can be done. Coulson. Coulson is not a comic character. They created him for Iron Man, and he just took off. Yeah, I mean, he's... Like, and, and he was like, you know, they just got an actor that cared about the part. That's all it took, and, and well-written part. And he's in, and now he is a comic character as a result. But before that, he was created entirely for the MCU. And, like, he had his own damn show for a while. Like, Coulson was popular. Coulson probably still is popular. And so it can be done, apparently pretty easily. So that was always an excuse I always heard, and I never bought it. And now I really don't buy it, now that, now that, I, now that I think about it from what that guy said. You know, just, you know, make new characters. There's nothing stopping Pedro Pascal from being some other scientist that works with Reed Richards. Maybe he's there whenever the accident happens in space and he gets powers too. Don't make him the villain because of it. You know, just make him his own character. You know, if you want him in the movie. Or, since I don't 100% know Blue Marvel's background, I could well, be wrong on this, but have him show up and be the other guy. He gets his powers that way. You know, because he's a super scientist, super powerful type. Like, you say Blue Marvel? Yeah, Blue Marvel. Yeah, no. Why don't they cast him? He's, like, uber powerful. and I don't know. And he, I mean, he's a black superhero, right? Oh, Jim, I have to go back to the Captain America thing. Yes, he's black. Uh, to go back to the Captain America thing, because I realized there was a third possible problem. Now that we're talking about, you know, yeah. casting non-white characters, it's because of one of them, Sabra. Do you know who Sabra is? Sabra is an Israeli superhero who, uh, in the comics, is very pro-Israel, very anti-not Israel, to put it bluntly. There's literally a comic panel where she's like, oh, the actions of this individual have made me consider this poor dead Palestinian kid as an actual human being. Like, that's what's written in the book. And it's like, Jesus, who wrote this? 
like I've only ever seen Sabra like a couple issues because I think she's a mutant and she showed up in a few X Men issues. But it was just like once I saw that panel, I was like, maybe we shouldn't use Sabra. Sabra is supposed to be. Or maybe we should use like let's just pretend that didn't happen and like update Sabra for the twenty first century. <laughs> So yes, it could be recent events have forced their hand on this one. Uh, so anyway, back to Pedro Pascal and Blue Marvel and everyone else like that. You know, yeah, bring in Blue Marvel. You know, let's see more of Goliath. We've got him now from Ant Man Two. Yeah. You know, make an origin story for him. Yeah, bring him in. Um, bring Luke Cage over from the Netflix series. Thought the guy that played him did a decent job. You know, bring him in. Um, I don't know. When we get the X Men, we'll have Bishop for sure, and Storm. You know, and Storm's like one of the most powerful characters in the comics. Period. You know, we'll get we'll you know we'll have these other options. You know, you just gotta you just gotta use what you got, and if you don't have it, just make it. Like, it's not like Stan Lee and Steve Ditko and Jack Kirby didn't just like, well, what do we need this issue? I'm just gonna make a new villain. And then 30 years later, it's like, oh, that guy's iconic. You know, it's like, just started off as like some dumbass idea that Jack Kirby had or something, you know? Well, there's some dumbass ideas that stay dumbass ideas, so. Well, I'm sure that there are. Condiment King? Condiment King rocks. What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) But no, I mean, just make new characters. Like, people will embrace them. And for the love of God, like, where's the live action Miles Morales movie? Wasn't there supposed to be a new Spawn movie coming out? Yeah, I, and I realized as I was editing the last video, I never even mentioned Spawn as far as black superheroes. You know. And uh, we got to watch Blue Beetle, because i got to know what went wrong there. That was an attempt at a Hispanic superhero. Wow. Well. i got to figure out what went wrong there, so i got to watch that sometime. I haven't even seen Shazam 2 yet. Yeah, I haven't watched it either. Well, I mean... Pretty much the DCEU is dying, and it's going to be replaced by the DCU, right? Yeah, even though it's like still half the same pieces, I think. Well, good news is, is that Flashpoint sets the stage for all of that to happen. Yeah, but Flashpoint ended with basically everything still being the same, except now George Clooney was Batman. Which supposedly, I guess, in the Batgirl movie was supposed to be... Um, or not, not... No, sorry... The Batgirl movie is going to have Michael Keaton as the Batman. Yeah. Well, Not George Clooney, so. No. I, do, I do at least give them credit. Now, I, I wonder if, if the Flash is like, hey, I need to go buy some stuff. He's like, here, take the Bat credit card. No, there was no reference to the Bat credit card, unfortunately. Uh, what about Robin? No. Chris it, O'Donnell? Didn't see Chris O'Donnell anywhere. Man, talk about. I feel bad for Chris O'Donnell. Yeah. <laughs> Not as bad as I feel about uh, uh, Alicia Silverman. I think Silverstone. Right? Silverstone. Yeah, Alicia Silverstone. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. She has the same birthday as I do. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But uh, everybody knows your birthday. I don't care. Well, I can I can say mine my birthday is easy to remember because it's Mario Day. March 10th. Yeah, I get it. So, anyways. See, you know what we talk about, that we have nothing to talk about, and yet we talk about everything. <laughs> Though, hopefully, everyone understands that we do we do go into some, I don't want to even say, play, some, some very sensitive areas, especially when it comes to, again, Madam Web, the Marvels, and stuff like that. And understand, it's nothing but with love, with, for these, you know, for, for movies and stuff. It's not anything of mouse. It's not anything of um, whatever. It's like we want movies to succeed. We want things to have, because obviously if movies don't succeed, I mean, that's a whole. Yeah, and it's and it's not about denying, well, I'll just I'll spell it out. It's not about denying non-white actors' roles or anything like that. Like, like I said, if there's not a role there, make one, you know? Like, they've proven it can work, with Coulson. It just has to be done with care to actually make a compelling character. 
you know, like, like we mentioned, Blue Marvel. Like, I don't know, again, I don't know much about him, unfortunately, and I'm sure his origin has nothing to do with the Fantastic Four, but it's not like we haven't fudged the lines in other areas, you know, tie him together, he's in the movie for a little bit, use it as a jump-off point to make his movie, you know? So, yeah, and, and, and once we get to the X-Men, assuming, depending on which team it is, there should actually be a considerable variety, but... You know, we got to get there first, which, by the way, that's what we should do. This is our franchise fixes for the MCU, since we're clearly in, since it's clearly in trouble. Franchise fixes? Yeah, for the MCU, which will basically boil down to two episodes. One, how to bring in the Fantastic Four, and two, how to bring in the X-Men. So, I, that's that's their only hope at this point, in my opinion. I don't, like, with, yeah. like, their current slate... Even if they make a Thor 5, which, I mean, I think Chris Hemsworth's still down, I think. Uh, unless they, like, really turn it around, no one's going to go see it. I think they need to make, when, if Robert Downey Jr. decides to come back as Iron Man, they need to make him hologram Iron Man. You know, that, that's, people have, that's one of the things, is people have been like, well, there's a lot of people that are like, no, don't bring him back. Like, one, either... He had his story arc. It's done. But number two is like, they're going to destroy the character. And so I think the way to answer number one, number two, we just have to hope and pray. But number one is like you said, hologram Iron Man. Make him the new Jarvis. Sure. You know, some some backup that kicked in once he died and, you know, go for it. And you just need him for bit parts here and there. And yeah. Although the word on the street is they have reached an agreement with him. So we'll have to see. I do kind of wish that they'd, you know, be able to actually make a real Hulk movie and actually either play out Planet Hulk or some chunk of the uh, Peter David storyline or something. You know, just, just give him, just finally give him his own movie that's compelling. And They could, they could even tell you, uh, like, a prequel. Have a. Uh good way to introduce the X-Men, have Wolverine hunting the Hulk. There you go. Yeah, I don't know. Like, we'll have to do a video on it, but I'm still at a total loss as to how to actually introduce the X-Men without having to explain, hey, so, like, whenever the whole universe was at stake, who the hell were you guys? So you placed the Inhumans were on the blue, in the, uh, the... Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've, got an, I've got an idea. It's just... You know, it's basically like ultra powerful Dark Phoenix plus the Emicron Crystal, and then just shunts them all to the future, seeing that there's some future calamity that they'll be needed to help deal with. And then somehow, like the other folks with X Factor genes, just kind of chilled in the background. You know, yep. Because that's basically the solution with the Fantastic Four. Also, is yeah, they took off in the '60s and they wound up in the negative zone, and. Now they've come back. Well, there's a, also a villain for them, too. If they don't want to throw Galactus in the beginning, you can put in Iolas. Yeah. Now, I mean, the the big catch there is going to be, if you do the time skip like that, Doom has to be with them. So, Because he has to be a contemporary to read for that all to work. I think they should do a three-story arc, like they did with um, the event, kind of like the Avengers. Have Doom be the first villain. Have Annihilus be the second, because Annihilus, you've got Loki, Doom, or like the Avengers, Ultron and Annihilus, Galactus, and Thanos. Maybe. Annihilus. I, per- I personally would use Annihilus first. Why? Have them escape the negative zone, and Annihilus is following. And then that gives you time to build up to Doom, because Doom's the far more important villain than Annihilus. Even though Annihilus should be far greater. Nihilus is just a power mad idiot. That's an idiot bug thing. Yes. Like he's he's not a threat. He's also apparently good with children. If he's not eating them. Well, that was a claim he made to Nova in the follow up to the Annihilation series. As he's sitting there telling him, he's like, "Yes, one of your core defeated me one time," and Nova's was like, "That was me." <laughs> he's like, "No, it wasn't. You're a buffoon. It couldn't have possibly been you." He's like, "I'm the one that killed you," and he's like, "No, you're not. You've clearly got hit in the head earlier or something." 
and they have to go talk to the Fantastic Four, and they get there, and, like, it's only uh, Franklin and Valeria, and they won't get in, and I was like, let me handle this, I'm good with children. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I am an Isles, lord of the negative zone, you will let us pass. And they're like, no, we won't. <laughs> so, yeah. That was pretty good. But, uh, no, Annihilus is one of those, like, yeah, he could be a threat, but as long as you contain him in the negative zone, he's not a problem. Doom, on the other hand, has conquered all of reality, like, at least twice, I think. We for sure has once, and he's conquered the Earth at least once, using the Purple Man. He's got a very, like, broadcasting on TV. Purple Man's like, oh, this isn't fair, these are my powers, like, I should be the one controlling everything. One for your helmet, I can control you too. Doom's like, all right, takes his helmet off. He's like, give it your best shot. And he's like, you'll do what I say. And he's like, you'll do what I say. And Doom's like, no, I won't. Sheer willpower just defeats the purple man. And Purple Man's like, God damn it. And he's like, that's why I'm the ruler and you're the guy in chains. So, yeah. So, any other, any other topics before we move uh, on? I don't think so. All right. I'm trying to think of... If there was anything, there was nothing really in gaming. Uh, I am back to reading the Battletech book, so it's moving along at a good, brisk pace. Uh, we covered the streaming stuff. I was just going to mention, as far as the video, oh, uh, the third episode of Season 2 of Invincible is out, and it's pretty good. Uh, definitely had its funny moments. The leader of the Galactic Council, or whatever the hell they were, I'm pretty sure it's voiced by Peter Cullen, because it sounded like they were talking to Optimus Prime most of the time, so I'm pretty sure that's who it was. And, uh, yeah, everyone's still dealing with the fallout of what happened with the last episode of Omni-Man, the last episode of the first season. And this one ends with uh, Invincible there, gets convinced to go to this planet to fix some problems, then he meets their king, and it's Omni-Man. And he's like, hey, son, glad you came. Like, the episode ends, like, right there. So, but you find out that in a lot of other realities, he joined Omni-Man They just conquered the Earth. So, yeah, there's one guy that came from one of those realities that's, like, trying to stop this one. Because he's convinced that he'll turn evil, too. And So, yeah, and the, the one-eyed guy from back in the first series, he was an attempt to make someone that could fight one of the Viltramites. And they're like, well, he was the only one we actually were able to give powers to, and he's not quite strong enough to handle one of them. So, like, three of them show up and just beat the shit out of him, tear his eye out, bust most of his organs out of his back, and, you know, so he's in a hospital at the end of it. May or may not be dead. Usually if your organs are out of your body, it's... Well, but they've got space healing. He might be okay. Uh, but, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's good. You know, I like where the show's going. You know, see how far we get here in season two. So, uh, right. I think that's about. Oh no, that's not it, Jim. I'm sorry. I should have should have should have led with this earlier. After last episode, I watched Demons Part One. It is every bit as bizarre and insane as Part Two. People trapped in a movie theater. They're watching a movie about people being turned into demons, and one of them turns into a demon because she like put on this mask that was out front and cut herself in the face with the prop, which is what happens to the guy in the movie. He turns into a demon, then she turns into a demon, and they're convinced it's the movie. So they finally break into the projector room. They have to smash the projector. It doesn't stop anything. Most of the people end up turning into demons. Um, I think they were repelled off the roof at one point again. Uh, no, they had to climb out. The helicopter just randomly crashes through the roof of the theater. And so <laughs> they have to escape out. One of the demons got out. And the moment they're outside, you can just hear like random gunfire in the background. They don't say anything about that either. They don't acknowledge the fact you can hear gunfire all over the place. And, uh, yeah, they end up, like, hopping in the Jeep with some people. And, like, we got to get the hell out of the city. Like, it's being overrun. So I think they bomb the city at the end, and that's what they're looking at on TV in the second movie. And, yeah, there was a guy playing a pimp who definitely gets killed. Same guy's playing, like, a fitness instructor in the second one. So, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, a lot of the final footage is... A guy on a dirt bike with a katana driving through the movie theater, fighting off the demons. It is every bit as crazy as that sounds. Uh, but yeah, definitely worth a check out. Again, Lomberto Bava. 
Watch part one, then part two. Also, there's a subplot of some people driving around in a car for most of the movie. The guy's doing coke out of a can of coke. And, uh, yeah, but then they end up crashing at the theater. Then they go inside, then they all get turned into demons, too. They're the ones that let the one demon out. So it's all their fault. As it should be. So, yeah. Well, a lot of the same things. This also definitely takes place in Germany. Even though the director's Italian. But, anyway. Worth, worth, worth a check out. Worth a look. But I think that is all I've got. All right. Do well, you have some some bargain finds or something? Yes, I do have some bargain finds. So I am gonna, I am going to talk about what I found is kind of the current state of the flea market industry. That's an industry flea market market. One of the two. Uh, so no, um, my youngest has gotten really into Star Wars, so I decided to get him a a novel to see if he wanted to read it. Uh, this is in the Junior Jedi Knights line. Now, obviously, this is all. Um, what do they call it? The um, the old EU. So yeah, legends. Is, yeah, this would be considered legends because this is this follows Anakin Solo on Yavin Eight, which they saw. I guess supposedly they they find uh, ruins that are very similar to what's on Yavin Four. Uh, the Masazi ruins. Yep. So uh, this came out in 1996. So not. not not too bad on like length. I mean, for my 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 youngest is only uh, eleven, so under twenty two pages, really. Uh, really tame on the the length of that. Um, the other one that I got, and I actually ordered some more for this. So I've got a for those you can see here on and if you those that are listening, I got the NES version of a copy of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And this one came with the game and the manual, which is in the back. I actually ordered the box with the registration card and the um, Nintendo Power insert, and the oh, I said in the box too, uh, for twenty bucks off of eBay. So I've got that coming, so I can have a complete box copy of uh, Robin Hood. Uh, the other one, and I've got it sitting down on the floor, is I got a uh, a. Uh, not super old, but a pretty decently old uh, Dell uh, rugged book that can turn into a tablet. Hmm. But I got that because uh, my brother needs a computer that he can hook up to an old car to do some diagnosis. So, got that. But, I was very disappointed about, because I had gone to this uh, flea market in Kentucky called Flea Land. And, yes, it's the largest flea market in Kentucky, supposedly, and... I would hope so, with a name like that. You know, they have an antique mall, they have outdoor vendors, and then they have indoor vendors. And when I remember going back in the past, like, everything was like... A flea market was supposed to be like a yard sale. You would go, people would have their wares. Sometimes they would have handmade stuff, sometimes it would be, uh, like I said, like a yard sale, where they were selling just random antiques and stuff like that. That's not what it is. Almost every single booth that we went to while we were down there were these like bulk purchased, like I would say probably I could be wrong. I would say Chinese goods, but they were bulk purchased. They were just random new things in plastic bags everywhere. Almost all of it was that. And only like, you know, probably 10 booths there had, Ten booths out of the gobs and gobs that they had actually had some of them had vintage toys. I did look for some. They they had one that had like a bunch of black series, the GI Joe D class, you know, classified or whatever. They had those there, but there was only like two of those. Versus everything else was just this peddled crap of new, cheaply made junk. And I guess this is kind of the, the where flea markets are going because. It's so much easier just to order a pallet of junk that's new yeah. versus going and finding the stuff to buy or running, you know, some sort of like where you're getting collectibles and different things like that to go and sell. Um, I did get this copy of Robin Hood at Flea Land. I uh, paid a little more than I probably should have, but I wanted to go home with something. Didn't pay a lot, but I mean, more than it's worth. 
Though it did have the manual, so I was like, that's why I paid a little bit more. Yeah. The, the game itself only goes for about 12 bucks. I paid about 20 bucks for it. And I was like, it's got the manual. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight over that much. And the other weird thing was, is there was one of the few booths that didn't take credit card, which I found really odd. Hmm. Um, well, kind of in line with what you're talking about, I don't know if you noticed some of the booths at Comic Con are like that. Like, I can tell that what they've got, like, they'll have stuff, and it looks kind of neat, you know, it'll be like, like dragon figures and things like that. Uh, they're plastic, they're painted and everything, and they'll be like clockwork things or whatever. Whenever you buy one, the guy, like, reaches under the table and finds the box that it was shipped to him in. It's clearly some mass-produced thing. Yeah. You know, and de- almost definitely from China or Vietnam or Thailand or wherever, <clears throat> maybe Mexico. And um, it's one of those, like, you know, all I'd really need to do is just, like, buy one of these, figure out the name of the company, and just, like, set up a booth someplace else. And, I, and that's that's probably what's happening. And it, 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 it is. And the thing is, like, the okay, so the Antique Mall, while it didn't have any real collectibles that I that were interested in me, I mean, there were stuff that interested me, but it was nothing I would wanted to buy or anything like that, was that they had genuinely only antiques. They were very... And the way that they did the antique malls, the antique mall was everything had a booth number. You'd have to go up front and, you know, pay for it at the, the front counter. The flea market was they actually had vendors working. They worked their own booth, and they collected the money and did all that kind of stuff. And the one in Fleeland reminded me of, like, a shoe carnival because they had a barker who would, like... you would They would have, like, an like a... They had the machine where you would stand in there and try to, like, collect the cash and all that stuff. They had that. Um, and they would periodically say, okay, blah, blah, blah. You've now the next person that gets to do the cash grab. And, well, you know. Uh, I think, honestly, we had more fun playing the quarter coin pusher than, <laughs> than actually shopping there. Uh, so, because me and my girlfriend went down there and we we spent spent the day uh, looking through there and then coming back up here and... Um, yeah, I was just disappointed because flea markets used to be just like yard sales but permanent, and it's not that anymore. Like I get those booths having like one or two of them, but when you, when a huge percentage of them were just that, like I don't know, you lose a lot of you know I don't know I lose a lot of respect for it because it's like if I wanted to buy this stuff, I'll, there's too many apps out there now to go to to just buy that stuff. If I want to get something like that, I'll go to Timu. I'll go to uh, AliExpress or whatever it may be, and I'll buy what I want there. I'm not going to spend it on your, you know, the same, you know, your your stuff when you mark it up, and I'm not getting any deal on it. So it's a sad state. It is a sad, sad state. You, you know, you still get a few flea markets. We have uh, a chain of flea markets around here called Trader Bakers. They're still very much like a yard sale kind of thing. Uh, where people are just selling their own stuff. But even there, you'll still find a booth or two that have this bulk bought stuff. And like I said, if it's just a few of them, fine. But when the huge percentage of them is nothing but that, just disappointing. It, yeah, we still well, had a fun trip down there, but um, that was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's where we went for that. I was say, uh, we also ran into that with the uh, Lego minifigures at the conventions. And there'll be more than one booth. And you look at them and you're like, well, I know for a fact that some of these are not official Lego pieces because they've never made this figure. You know? And then the ones that they try to tell, oh, it's all official pieces. Yeah, it might be all official pieces, but they've been repainted or something. You know? Yeah. Or they're the ones that just aren't even official pieces. But, yeah, definitely. We'll probably need to clip this. I think it's a good conversation. Uh, <laughs> It's not a fun conversation, but it's a good one. It's 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 the state of things. It's especially for somebody that likes to collect vintage games and stuff like that. It's just, I mean, the market's gone away now. You have to worry about because one of the things I saw a lot of, and I was actually debating on buying one, was the um like the the fake Nintendo Mini or the you know yeah. Super Nintendo Mini uh, things like that. I always debated on buying one so I could have one hooked up to the TV so that I didn't always have to break out the NES. I well, didn't have to break out. Well, at Comic-Con, I showed you the booth there. The guy had those, too. 
because uh, I actually asked him because one of them went all the way up to the N64 and beyond even that. And I was like, so these come with controllers, right? He goes, yeah. I go, so what about the N64? He goes, no, no. Like, it comes with a different controller, different mapping. He's like, we all know whoever designed that controller needs to be, like, thrown into heavy traffic or something. You know, the one thing is, is that, uh, and this is something I should just do a review on at some point, is that the N64 the, controller. The N64 controller, while it's, it, you know, while it's, uh, it was easy to, to adapt to, like, say you play one game, you hold it, like, hold the middle thing, hold the right side. Another one, you would hold both the outer sides. There was a company, and I'm going to probably butcher how it's pronounced, but it's called Hori, H-O-R-I, and they make a controller where you can hold the two hands and operate every single button. And if you have an N64, definitely recommend getting it. It does take a little bit of time to get used to because you're used to playing it, you know, with the N64 controller. You're not going to get quite used to it, but it definitely helped, and I don't know why they didn't go that route later in life. I mean, they... Like, when the original Xbox released, they had what they called the Duke controller, which was a giant controller. But then they realized this was ungodly for people to hold in their hands, so then they shrunk it down. And what they had shrunk down to was pretty much similar to what the 360 controller t- turned out to be later. So, But, anyways, there's just my complaints about the status of buying crap vintage. Well, I mean... I think realistically that was always, that was destined to happen once the internet became a thing. Because if you're sitting there on that stuff and you know anything about the internet, you're like, well, the yokels aren't buying any of this. I'll just sell it on eBay. Yeah. They're like, but I've still got my booth, so what am I going to do? Oh, they don't know about AliExpress yet. I'll just buy a bunch of crap from there, flip it over here. Yeah. You yeah. know, or you, have, or you have just people that are looking for the stuff that just descend on these places and clean it all out of anything of real value. So this is where, and I could put this in a tales of collecting kind of thing, but uh, yard sales. Yard sales are the one saving grace. If, if you have the time, to, especially if your town does a town-wide yard sale, that's the best time if you're collecting anything vintage, because vintage games, vintage computers, vintage toys, vintage electronics, whatever that may be, Yard sales are the way to go because you're going to have people not saying that people are selling stuff because they don't know what they have. And that's kind of a bad way of putting it, but it really, it is the honest truth. Um, that's like where I bought my Coleco vision for $10. And the only thing that the woman said to me was, you'll take good care of this. And I'm like, yes, ma'am, I will take good care of it. Yeah. And sometimes it's, it's not even, you know, sometimes I think people do have an idea of what it's worth, but they're like, yeah, under super optimal conditions, I'll get that price. I just want to get rid of this. Yeah, because it's like, oh, yeah, I could sell it on eBay for 100 bucks, but that would require me to get the listing, you know, verify that everything's tested and working, package it up to ship it, especially if it's something that's, you know, fragile. Yeah. Um, you know, and all of that. It's like, okay. And then after all that, between the eBay fees and your, since you're probably going to list it for free shipping, it's like 90% of the things on eBay are listed as free shipping. Between eBay fees and shipping, you're probably going to lose 20% if you're lucky of what you just did. And then, so, and then if you have somebody, you know, if you can do the same thing, sell it for 40 or 50 bucks right there at a yard sale. Yeah. You know, avoid the headache. You're making less money, but it's, it's gone. You've got the cash. I mean, that's, that's why I turned to Facebook marketplace to move some of my, uh, some of my Lego sets. And, uh, cause I was just wanting to avoid all the hassle of things, even though I ended up still ended up shipping the train. That was the one thing I didn't want to do, but the guy didn't want the box. That's where, that's why that all worked out. Cause I went from having to ship something that has a surface area, about two thirds of this table to like, I fit it in a box. that was like eight by eight by about six inches deep. So save a lot on postage there. Nice. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you've got your yard sales, uh, not St. Vincent's. What's the other? Yeah, Salvation Army of Goodwill. Yeah. I, th- I think it's Goodwill's the one I'm thinking of. People, I keep seeing people find have fines there. The key is to go around wealthy neighborhoods because they don't they don't have time. Like this, this thing's gonna be worth a hundred bucks. That's nothing to them. They don't care. They just want it gone. They're just gonna go donate it and be done with it. Well, that's like going up to the Goodwill outlets up in Indianapolis. Uh, 
I can, I can tell you how many actually box games I bought. I got my probably the most random box game I ever found. There was uh, my copy of Mortal Kombat Two for the 32X in the box with the manual, all that. Found it at Goodwill Outlet. Now, if you don't know what a Goodwill Outlet is, it's not like regular Goodwill where you go and they have everything priced. No, Goodwill Outlets they just have bins. They just dump everything into, and you buy it by the pound. Yeah. So. If you somehow found a bin full of video games, you're paying by the pound, not by the thing. Now, the one thing that always got after me, or got, this kind of bugged me, is that they would never sell computers. Because they're like, well, technically we're not supposed to sell computers because they may have personal data, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I get that, but why did you put them out in the first place then? Yeah, that seems ridiculous. So what I did is... um, uh, is I would just put them on the bottom of my cart and then just pile it full of other crap on top of it. <laughs> Get around that real quick. Because, if, you know, the first thing I do is I wipe the computers anyways. I mean, like, I've got this this laptop I I bought. First thing I'm going to do is just wipe it. I'm not, yeah. not going to keep it for anything else because, you know, it's not going to do me any good having their old stuff on there anyways. And you never know what the hell they had in there, viruses, other things. So I'm going to wipe it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, you know, definitely let us know your comments, you know, on... Well, Jim, on... If, 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 if I may, I have an Ollie's anecdote related to all this. Not Ollie's, sorry, Ross. I figured out why I'm not ever finding anything at the Ross store. Because there's a time in the afternoon that they unload the truck and put all the crap on carts and put it out there. And there's vultures just sitting there waiting for it. Like, I figured this out, like, about two weeks ago. They're at the one in Bloomington. And, uh, see, there's this one guy I've seen there now a few times, talking to him a little bit. But, uh, like, we missed, I showed up one day, and I, I see these carts back here, and I'm like, what the hell is this? Because I would usually, I would didn't check in the afternoon ever. And uh, the guy explained to me, and it's like, are you for real? Like, this is why I never find anything in this store. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, that's what they do. Unload the trucks, put on the carts, and everyone just picks through them. So he's like, hey, see those people over there? He's like, look in their cart. And I glanced over, and some of the G.I. Joe classified figures that from Target were like 40 or $50, because like Duke and a motorcycle and everything. They're like 12 or 13 I think, at Ross. Yeah, they had a they had cart full of them. They could grab them all. And I was just like, yeah, pretty much. You know, I I, over there. And I mean, you know, and I I don't fault them because there's definitely some things that if I found them there, not that because I just want one of those for myself. But like the Viper three packs from Amazon that are like ninety bucks on Amazon normally, they want fifteen for them at Ross. Hell yeah, I'd buy all four of them if they had four of them. I'd buy ten of them if they had them, you know, because two for me, the rest for the bay, you know. Although I might go to Facebook Marketplace first, but. uh yeah, or, or now Ollie's. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Ollie's. I think they're just they're just not putting them out because it's clogged up with crap from all the previous waves. So because now it's really funny, the figures I've been looking for at Ollie's are now also showing up at Ross as of today from a post I saw earlier. It's maddening. I, I, I don't know what is happening. It's like this wave of figures like just never hit retail. They've just been floating around all the other stores because, like, they never hit retail because they were clogged with old crap. And now they're over here, and there are Cobra figures that they want five bucks a pop for that are twenty dollars at retail. That I'm sure I could get fifteen for very easily. So I'd just buy a metric shit ton of them, keep a few that I want for myself, and just start selling the rest in lots on eBay. But no, I can't do that because I can't find the goddamn things. So. Yeah, the most I've the most I've found so far is Chad found me a Sergeant Slaughter figure, which that was an online exclusive. I don't know how the hell that wound up at Ollie's. <laughs> that was like a thirty five dollar figure or something. Got it for like twelve bucks. I'm not complaining, but like, I don't know how the hell that happened. Now you just need to go and have the actual Sergeant Slaughter sign it. Maybe, but uh, no, I've I've honestly thought about just like picking up random crap every time I go to Ollie's and just making that one of our segments. Like, what I find at Ollie's this week? Because, like, there's all kinds of board games there that I have to assume are terrible. That's why they're there. But maybe they're not. Like, I bought one that was, like, 15 bucks. It's normally, like, 50 It's got all kinds of miniatures with it and everything. 
the Rivet Wars, the Eastern Front. So, I don't know, I'm going to give that a shot. There's a, uh, like, a Risk Galactic Edition or something, where you're, like, trying to conquer all of space. Uh, there's actually, there's a Monopoly Edition that actually looked kind of interesting. You're, like, building a building, building buildings and stuff in the center. So, I don't know. And just, like, a shit ton of Marvel Legends figures from Waves I don't need. Like, a few days ago, I realized my 15% off coupon is getting ready to expire. I knew I was never going to find those Crimson Guards. So it's time to buy a whole bunch of hand ninjas for Daredevil to fight and to make Stilt Man taller and taller. I'm going to need to make a video of Stilt Man now because he'll be like, he's almost a human height once I add these <laughs> in. <laughs> so yeah. But uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I didn't even realize that was happening at Ross. So yeah. So I'm really pulling for you to find something for me at the Ross and Jasper when you stop there. I keep, you know, I, I stop there occasionally. And then I found out there's a whole other like outlet I should be looking at, Burlington. Apparently they sell stuff like that too. A lot of those, like well, most of those clothes, like Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Burlington, they all do the same thing on how they get all their stock. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, it's it's from places like Target where once they mark it down to a certain point, if it doesn't sell. They sell it to someone else. That's where Big Lots gets all their crap, too. So, yeah. That's that's why we don't ever find Lego sets there. Because Lego sets don't go that low. You know? Yeah. You will not, like... I've I've found them at 90% off before. Actually, it wasn't even 90% off. It was the fact they were promo figures. And so they just had to have a price in the system, so they were a penny. And I found them at the Toys R Us in Evansville. Like, once I saw online, I called down there. Like, you guys have any of these? Like, yeah. Like, I'll be there in an hour and a half before the interstate. So, went down there. I was like, scan one of these. Their opinion is like, I don't care how many you have in that box. I'll take all of them. They only had like six, but still, like, I was prepared to buy like hundreds of these things. I want them all. Yeah. Well, I mean, I sold them for like seven bucks a piece. Like, from a percentage standpoint, it's a 7,000% increase. <laughs> That's the greatest profit I've ever achieved on anything. The greatest profit I ever achieved was uh, when I found uh, a... I mean, I suppose beyond, like, free to something, but, you know. Yeah, well, I think it was when I um, bought Ed 209, the, one of the original from the... One of the original figures. Bought it for a quarter and sold it for $25. See, there you go. Ed 209. I should have kept it now that I think about it. But eh. It was Anyways, definitely let us know down in the comments below if any uh, your thrifting woes or pluses too. I guess you know if you've had any good luck or found a good place to, for for you guys to go, and well, maybe we can find a place to go and find those good deals as well. Or if you're willing to buy those crimson guards at cost or sell them to me at cost, I'll cover the shipping. Yeah. Yeah. Now I won't buy a whole bunch to resell. I'll let you do that. But I need like four for my collection. All right, well, that's all that I've got for today. I think we've, again, found a way to ramble on for a couple Well, I mean, hours. we had actual stuff to talk about for a lot of this. You know, we had the trailers, we had the casting rumors, we had the uh, the reshoots. You know, then we kind of kind of veered off course several times in there, but, you yeah. know. But, yeah. And, a, and one technical malfunction with the camera shutting off, so. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all been a good at, time. At least we caught it quickly. Yeah, yeah, I was actually kind of surprised. You're like, hey, the camera's off. I'm like, well, I'm glad you're looking at it, because a lot of times I don't look at the camera. Cause... Well, the only reason it is because you got up. Because uh, I saw you, like, moving over there near the camera. I was like, because I was still talking, and I was like, wait a minute. That's supposed to be showing me. When did that shut off? You know? So, good times. But luckily, it was minutes, a minute maybe after it, sh we, we were, it shut off. So, yeah. not too bad. So, if you see a splice in here, that's what it was. Yes. Anyways, um... Definitely going you know, to do the normal YouTube stuff, the like, comment, share, subscribes, all of that. Uh, we did hit that 300, and we, you know, we're very appreciative of all that. So Yes, thank you fine folks again for helping to make that happen. Or rather, making that happen, I should say. It didn't help. You did it, not yeah. us. Though I hope, sure hope that you, you, you did subscribe because you actually like what we say, not because, like, look at these fools go in there. Yeah... Yeah, I mean, I don't see us pop up whenever I search for our name on any other channel. So, so far, I don't think anyone else is out there making videos of us. Like, oh, look at these assholes. 
You know, though, if somebody did sit down and actually critique us, like I wouldn't be too whatever about that because as long as it's an actual critique, I could live with that. Because if, if it's just some guy going, "These guys are idiots," yeah, and then no explanation to why, yeah, maybe not. But. Yeah, I do actually know a guy who does videos like that, so I really hope we don't show up on his channel. It's too funny whenever he does Scott Garibay, though. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, I mean that'll uh, do it for this uh, meeting of the uh, Geek Ball. So. Um, yeah, I guess well, this is, what, the 15th episode? So yep. On to number 16, I guess. So, Which, again, as I mentioned back at the beginning, for those of you who are still listening, might be late because we are going into Thanksgiving week here and don't know for sure if we're going to get to get, if or when we're going to get together to record next. So it might be after Thanksgiving, which means it might be the following week as far as the episode, or I might release the episode not on a Monday. So. Yeah, plus I have to wake up from my turkey coma that I'm sure I will be in at that point. Yeah. Sometime this week, multiple and, times this week. And I may or may not be helping someone move Saturday, so. Okay. Dude, that's the only bad thing about owning a truck. Is that people want to be like, hey, you got a truck? You want to help me move? Oh, no, this is more because I'm their brother, but. Oh, yeah. <sighs> anyways, well, we can go off on that tangent later, but anyways, we'll see you on the next uh, Geek Cabal, uh, what, what Cabal, Cabal Whisperings. My gosh, it's been so long. I said it at the beginning, <laughs> fine. Yes, we'll see you on the next Vol Whisperings, and hopefully we get some echoes out of this. Oh, we will. We will. All right. See ya. See you later.